Hey there, welcome back. It's Louisa from Feel Good Astrology. And in this episode, I'm going to deep dive into all that I can think of that is helpful in navigating the new season, which is starting next week on the 20th of March. So we've got the spring equinox. Some of us <laughs> know it that way, you know, if we're in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, it's also known as the vernal equinox. We might say March equinox because that's a point where everyone can agree upon, no matter where you are in the world. Um, so what is it? Um, you know, how does it come about? What does it mean for us? I'm going to spend the first half of this um, this video looking at the actual chart for the moment of the March equinox, which is on the 20th, um, I think at 3.06 a.m. That's London, UK time. That's where I'm in that time zone. Um, and looking at the sort of quality of the planets and, and what's going on, what theme is coming up, how is that marking the entrance into our next season? You know, what does that mean for us? Um, I'm also going to be looking at some of the events that are coming up in this season ahead because, you know, yes, we've got a, an interesting starting point and the chart for the actual um, equinox itself is, is quite exciting. But yeah, there's some really, really big astrology. I have to say, hand on heart, that this year, 2024, has so much going on for it. It's it's quite incredible. And a lot of it is taking place, um, you know, at the end of winter and the beginning of spring, uh, again, from the Northern Hemisphere. It always seem, it seems to me that it's been ramping up really since the end of January. And it's just going to get more and more speedy. Um, and definitely a lot more interesting as we get into May, June time, when I think some of these pain patterns will be releasing somewhat. But anyway, I digress. You know, I'm, I'm going a little bit off on a tangent. You know, this is really to understand what we're being called out for, what we're being called to rise up into. You know, there's a real feeling that there is something very karmic going on right now, whether you believe in karma or not. To me, it feels like there is something moving us right now, you know, or we are being collectively moved. Do you get that sense? Uh, you know, I wonder, you know, because it's, it's very easy for me to sit here and say, oh, this is what's happening. But, you know, I wonder, how do you sense what is going on in the world right now? It definitely feels unusual, I would say. So yeah, that's how I plan to have a look at this. And then I want to touch on some of the significance of, um, you know, the, the point that the equinox occurs at, which is known as zero point or zero degrees and zero minutes of arc in the sign of Aries. So what's the significance of that? And, you know, what happens if you're born at the time of the equinox or if you're born at one of the other um, points, one of the other very, very active zero point energies in the cardinal signs. So I'm going to sort of look a little bit deeper into that. Um, I've got some big thoughts, I have to say. Uh, and I'm not sure how I'm going to get them all out exactly, but I'm just going to trust that it's all going to happen. So bear with me. At the end of the video, I'm going to be looking on a sign by sign basis as to how you might choose to navigate this time ahead. Um, how could you use it to birth a new reality for yourself is my big question. Um, because, you know, as we go through the um, astrology for this time, you might get the sense that something kind of big is coming and, you know, we all get a part to play. So I wonder what your part is going to be. Anyway, let's um, bring the chart onto the screen. So what we're looking at right now is the chart for when the March equinox, see I put it March there just to, um, so it's right. <laughs> um, and I'm not, you know, saying spring when it's winter, for, uh, when it's autumn for other people. So as you can see, 20th March, 2024, 3.07 a.m. London, UK time. If you want to find out what time it's happening locally to you, I really, really recommend um, a couple of sites. Um, one of them is astro-seek.com. Uh, which is a really great site that you can use. Um, and um, I'm not entirely sure which <laughs> which of the amazing search um, functions you might use to find that. Maybe, um, oh, I, I will bring it up a bit later if you want to look at it. But the easiest one, I think, and this is the one that I usually go to, is timeanddate.com. And, date .com. and um, if you go to the sun and moon tab 
and then scroll all the way down right at the bottom you'll see seasons if you click on there it will show you the changing of the astrological seasons in your time zone and you know and you can put in a different time zone if you want um but it's a really really great site very very helpful in terms of um, moon patterns and eclipses as well as you'll see on that tab i'm um, going down they're all there for you anyway this um particular um, chart that I'm looking at is the moment that the sun goes into the sign of Aries. Now it does look to the untrained eye that the sun is actually in the sign of Pisces, but actually that little line um, just underneath the image of the sun is actually to do with um, Neptune's position at 27, 28 in the sign of Pisces. And then this little line next to it, literally right in between Pisces and Aries <laughs> it's just disappeared, is where the sun is residing. It's zero degrees, zero, zero in the sign of Aries. So it's literally just in the sign of Aries. This is marking the crossing point, the changing of the season. And should I say, it's also the astrological new year. The astrological year starts um, at the time of the vernal equinox when um, the sun goes into the sign of Aries. Now, I should put a little caveat in, you know, that's if you practice Western tropical astrology, you know, if you're, um, you know, practicing sidereal, um, you know, then that that you've got a completely different <laughs> astrological new year. But I am literally just following the Western tropical system in this video. Uh, so, yeah, this is the chart for it. Now, you'll see I've put here a whole list of different aspects or things that I find interesting about this chart. The ones with the yellow around have something to do with, um, you know, uh, an aspect to do with the sun. So we've got the sun at zero degrees. It's also in a conjunction to Neptune. Now, because they're um, just three degrees away, they're not actually in Kazemi um, because, you know, the, the sun has moved beyond Neptune. Um, but it's under the beams. Um, no, it's not. It's combust. Sorry. Um, Neptune is known as being in a combust um, position to the sun. So it's it's really not in a powerful position at all. Um, you know, the the usual um, ability of Neptune is, is dulled somewhat. It's kind of overcrowded by the sun. So, you know, Neptune in um, his ability to be really creative, to um, create um, and sense and intuit different ways of being. You know, Neptune is actually really pretty, um, almost weakened. It's almost like we can't quite tune in. It's like there's a bit, there's something a bit egoic going on because the sun's kind of in the way, stealing the limelight from Neptune um, and really holding court. Um, so Neptune's a little bit muted in this. So even though there's that conjunction, which, you know, if Neptune was in a conjunction with any other planet, you might be saying, well, that's interesting. You know, you've got this really sort of strong intuition fused with whatever the, the other planet is. In this one, it's 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 not working as well as usual. So you may well find that um, any intuition you have right now is, is somehow... Um, almost driven by your ego. So you have to ask yourself, you know, who does this intuition belong to? Am I really channeling it properly? Is it really coming through in the, in the correct way? So yeah, right now, um, you know, at the time of this equinox, you know, we're not as intuitive. We're not able to tune in quite as easily as we would usually. So this might be, you know, if you are somebody who does a lot of tuning in and a lot of channeling, you might actually think about, um, you know, planning some time in, you know, as, as soon as you can to get get intuitive and then plan in the next available time, you know, when they're suitably separated enough so that you feel um, it's, it's good to get back in that sort of creative place, you know, because, you know, Neptune isn't just about intuition. It's about all sorts of creativity seen through the veils of perception and reality, but also, um, you know, it's, it's about um, kind of, I, I really think there's something strong about our identity, identity going on with Neptune, you know, because at its highest expression, it's very much the merging of your personality with something much bigger. It's almost like we, we lose ourselves in joy and we lose ourselves in exaltation and that feeling of communion with mother or God or, or whatever it is that excites us so much. Um, and then it's at its lowest expression, we, we try and forget who we are, you know, with anything that we can use to excite senses. 
Um, but it's often, um, it often costs us, you know, in our energy levels. So yeah, th- having the sun in a conjunction with Neptune, you know, as, as the start for this new season really, I think is, is saying that we may be not as intuitive as we usually are. Um, and so maybe we're not intuiting everything in the sort of spiritual head or heady kind of realm, you know, because a lot of people think, you know, they're, they're channeling, they're really thinking in terms of their head space and their soul or spirit or however you choose to describe it. But it always comes as a thought or an inspiration. What I'm thinking is, you know, our form of intuition is coming from our bodies. It's a lot more physical now because the sun's involved. It's in the sign of Aries, which is very much about the body. So maybe try and tune in in a different way if um, intuition and creativity is your thing. Now, I'm going to sort of double that message (laughs) I've just given you because I now see that also the sun is in a trine to the moon in Leo. Now, the moon in Leo um, is pretty dramatic um, (laughs) and is also very colourful, really wants to be centre of attention um, and... And is also very generous and playful and and quite proud of all the things that they're doing. So, you know, the moon in Leo is is absolutely a performer at heart. There is this feeling of performance. There's this feeling of almost being in a play, being in a song, being in a rehearsal. Um, There is this this feeling that we're about to perform and there's something kind of exciting going on about it. So I think that's another marker for this season ahead that we might – start to feel like we're actually having a leading role in our life. You know, sometimes it feels like our life moves away from us quite quickly or that um, events go at such a pace that we're not able to be in control or feel like we're producing it or really, really being there. Sometimes we feel a little out of control. So I see these, these two, you know, the sun and the moon, both being in fire signs as being absolutely um, a, a message that we can be kind of direct And also very fiery, very warm, and also very much in charge. (laughs) Now, um, the next thing um, to consider, I think, would be um, the sun in a sextile to Pluto in Aquarius. So Pluto's finding his feet in the sign of Aquarius. Um, You know, he's hinting to us that there's all sorts of um, transformation going on for all of us, but also for society as a whole. You know, it's in the sign of Aquarius, which is very much um, about a global vision or a bigger picture. Um, and how um, there are big systems at play and also um, subjects such as what is freedom, what is sovereignty, given that it's in opposition to the moon. Um, You know, there's a lot of different things going on here. But as we're going into um, this new season, you know, not only (laughs) are we feeling things and intuiting things in our body, not only are we wanting to direct our energy and feeling like you know, this really is the time of our life and we really do need to play our part. But we're also now thinking, how can we control um, our part in this? How can we, you know, there's there's some tension and need for us to feel a lot more controlled. Now, if you are somebody who has anything important around zero to two or three degrees, um, in particular in fire science, and this is going to be very energizing for you, Or if you've got them, um, I would say, you know, in the fixed signs, you've got quite an important year ahead anyway, because, you know, Pluto's movement here is is kind of important. But, you know, with this equinox, um, what really comes to mind is the other equinox, you know, the other solstice equinox partners, the cardinal signs. So if you're born you know, around the time of the two equinoxes. So we've got the um, spring equinox or March equinox around the 20th of March. This year, it's the 20th of March. Um, We've also got um, the autumn one around, I can't remember the exact date, but in, uh, is it the 23rd of August, roughly off the top of my head? No. um, (laughs) Hang on one second. This is terrible. (laughs) <laughs> I just checked. <laughs> I just stopped recording to double check. And it said September, of course. So I'm actually looking at the dates now for this year. So, um, you know, but these these dates are pretty much standard dates. You know, they might deviate a little bit um, year on year. But for instance, um, 
you know, if you're born in and around the 20th of March, in and around the 20th of June, in and around the 22nd of September, or in and around the 22nd of December, then you're born at the time of an equinox or a solstice. And, you know, you've got this zero point energy really built into your chart. You know, there is this 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 kind of newness and a freshness. And so I, I absolutely um, imagine that this time, if you are born around this time, that this particular season is going to be really strongly um, pulling at you. Or you might notice that you've got other planets around these degrees. Um, you know, it, it's an absolute you know, moment in time that is moving you forwards, especially given that we've also got Pluto and the moon involved um, in the early degrees as well. So yeah, that's interesting. We've, and like I said at the start, we've, we've got um, Neptune at 27 degrees, which is really, really close as well. And also we've got Mars at 27 degrees. So, you know, there's a couple right at, oh, and also Vesta, um, at the end of um, the signs. So yeah, there's a lot of that sort of zero point energy kind of triggering off. Um, so yeah, it feels like a very, very strong start to a new season. We've also got the sun in a semi-square to Jupiter. So, you know, there's Jupiter. So a semi-square is 45 degrees. So it's a 45 degree angle between them. Um, and the semi-squares they're a little bit easier than squares, but essentially the sun, um, you know, and Jupiter are um, interacting with some kind of frustration. I always think the semi squares are quite frustrated and, and difficult to realize. So there is this feeling of, yeah, here I am. There is this, this life that I am, I'm, I'm managing and I'm producing, you know, I am the star of my show. I am the star of my own story. And, I want to grow and I want my story to be big or I want people to know about me or I must do this because if I don't do this, I'm going to fall behind. There's a lot of pride involved given, you know, that we've got, you know, these fixed signs as well as this very strong Aries point. Um, so I really think it's, it's almost like a frustration that we want to run before we can walk or, you know, that we expect to have been a lot further ahead at the time as, you know, that we're going into this um, equinox. So there's a certain amount of frustration. And I've already mentioned about the moon um, in opposition to Pluto. I know that's not directly related to the sun, but they're both linked up, um, creating this kind of really kind of cool little um, triangle between them. But other things that are going on on this day, for instance, um, as we head into the March equinox. So we've also got a conjunction between the North Node, Mercury and Chiron, um, which is just down here. Now, um, if you follow astrology or if you've been to this channel before, you'll know that, uh, you know, I spent quite a lot of time looking actually at the North Node and Chiron coming into connection to each other. Um, and they were really at the pinnacle of this energy between the 19th of February right the way through to the 5th of March. Um, now they're starting to separate. Um, however, that energy is still going on. And that really was the feeling of this, um, you know, we're waking up to what we need to heal in ourselves. You know, we've been awakening to this feeling of pain or a feeling of, you know, maybe that we're getting to the core of what it is that ails us, um, not just physically, but emotionally. Um, there's this sense of maybe what our Achilles heel is, you know, what is it that keeps tripping us up and what are we self-sabotaging? And it's almost like it's, 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 it's been extra highlighted right now for a reason. And, you know, with Mercury in a conjunction with Chiron at this time and the North Node involved, you know, what is really coming up for me is that this season is set that we're able to talk our way through what is ailing us. We're able to communicate with our bodies better. And if you remember right at the start, I was saying, you know, we might not be as intuitive, but we can be intuitive with our bodies. We can be really connected to our bodies. So I'm really seeing that we can actually, we've got the capability to get really deep inside and and find out what it is that we need to change, what we need to shift, um, what we need to let go of, and, and we can talk ourselves through it. But it is also um, indicative that we might all become each other's coaches or that we might be seeking help from actual coaches and mentors. You know, this is a really, really good season. You know, if 
if you have already realized that a maybe you're not the best person to coach yourself or b that you can probably go further when you're working with somebody else that might push you a little bit outside of your comfort zone then this is a fantastic time to consider that um you know uh, having a coach that can really help you see those blind spots for instance and those those no go areas that you're not pre prepared to um engage with <laughs> this is actually pretty useful now, we've also got Venus in a conjunction with Saturn, um, and this is still playing out at the moment. And yeah, I, I, I really like this energy, even though um, Saturn's a bit of a cold fish. And obviously, um, you know, Venus wants to feel really um, quite warm and connected. There is something very stoic very balanced, very grounded, very graceful about these two coming together. So it's not that we're over overly sentimental, we're not gushing, um, we're actually quite poised and graceful, which I think is actually quite useful. You know, we might be coming to a moment where we can not only get to our own blind spots and get in really deep, but then be able to have the poise and self-control to be able to know, uh, like ask ourselves, okay, so might have made a mistake there, or I might be about to change how I feel about something. I might be about to let go on something. What does that mean for me? You know, because a lot of people, you know, if they've got a very overly emotional Venus, um, or if they've got a seriously triggered Saturn, you know, they might not give themselves the chance to actually make that final connection to be able to make that final step. You know, so you've already done your detective work. You've already worked out that actually you're probably at the root of all of your problems, which I, I think is true for most. Well, all of us, actually. You know, I think we really are. You know, we're, we are scripting our own our own um, lives here. Um, and yet sometimes we can know all this, but still not make that connection to be able to work with it and maybe not be grateful, you know, to um, the components in life that have helped you make those realizations. So I see that this is quite a graceful moment in time and that we might actually be um, kind of on our best behavior a little bit. You know, we've, we've got a, an, an opportunity, an opportunity to use great discernment. So I, I love that. Um, <laughs> then we've also got, obviously, because this has been coming up for months and months, you know, we've all been talking about it. These, you know, all of us astrologers, we've got this Jupiter Uranus conjunction and it's really starting to come into its, its game now. Um, they're just six degrees apart, but at the start of this, um, equinox, they're coming into their conjunction. Um, and you know, a whole month later, they are absolutely, spot on they're in the same place for the first time in really really long time and and so we're going to get some sort of excitement some big progressions some great new exciting thoughts and ambitions a sense of um hope and optimism and expectation and quite possibly um massive changes <laughs> you know i'm not expecting this to be very smooth it sounds super optimistic but i actually think it could bring in a lot of um discomfort all around because you know this is this is almost like a societal change and it's not just happening in any old year like right now there are a lot of tensions around the world um especially political ones in particular there's lots of health ones uh, the financial um, markets don't look that stable right now. They're changing quite a bit. And, you know, if you have used the principles of financial astrology, you'll know that when Jupiter and Uranus come together <laughs> um, and when nodes are um, connected to planets, when there's eclipses and all this jazz, that the um, stability in the markets tends to fluctuate quite a bit. So, you know, in this next season i expect there to be a lot of excitement and that excitement might feel like butterflies in the stomach but it might also feel like um this sense of impending doom as well <laughs> now, that's not to say that that is what's going to happen but what i would say is the feeling of excitement um is both good and bad you know we can have excitable bellies um and and feel you know that sense of anticipation so that's the thing i really think is happening you know around this aries point time at the time of the equinox is this sense of anticipation we know change is coming we can feel it all of us can um now the last thing that kind of fascinates me about this, um, because, you know, when you look at a chart, there's usually a legend in the bottom corner. 
And um, with all of these charts that I use on this channel, I take them from www.astro.com. I like to use... Um, I like to use software that everyone can use and everyone can have access to because I think, you know, if I'm going to use stuff and talk in, in such a way that I might be sharing information, might be teaching, I like it to, to be easy for you to be able to do that. So if you are using astro.com, you'll see there's legends at the bottom, like these little tables, and you can see um, where there's an intersection on these tables. So you can see all of the aspects that the sun makes, the moon, Mercury, Venus, etc. cetera. Um, and it will show you which planet is more active at that time. And so just by scrolling down, I can see that Jupiter and dwarf planet Ceres, who is here, they're making the most amount of aspects within this chart. Now, Ceres is very much about nurturing, and she is also very much about the seasons changing. Um, and with that, you know, the story of Ceres, which I've spoken about quite a lot in other videos, and I'll probably do a, an actual Ceres video at some point in the future. But Ceres, you know, she's Mother Nature. Um, and oh, she's also known as Demeter in um, mythology. Um, and her daughter Persephone was allegedly or possibly kidnapped and taken underground. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole story right now by, you know, by Pluto, also known as Hades. But anyway, she lost her daughter for essentially half of the year. And so the story goes that um, everything grows and flourishes when her daughter's earth side and when her daughter is living back in the underworld, um, everything dies down. And so, you know, we, the, um, Greek and Romans attributed the changing of the seasons to Ceres. So it's really interesting that Ceres, who has so much to do with the changing of the seasons, um, is, is really prominent in this actual chart. She's also like the mother of everything. She's also able to nurture everything. Like she knows when all the seeds are about to burst, she knows the different weather controls, everything that needs to happen for the soil to be rich and for life to flourish in the right months. And she also knows when she goes into grief um, and there is a lot of grief about the missing children or her daughter underground. And so there's a lot to do with grief and grieving with Ceres as well as growth and growth cycles. So she's very much about nurturing and in particular nurturing children, looking after our children. So children and looking after them and grieving um, for children if, if they need to be grieved for, you know, these are also themes that may well come up in this next season. So it wouldn't surprise me if news about children or um, changes with children is, is coming up. Um, Jupiter also, um, Jupiter is, is um, also known as Zeus in mythology, but Jupiter is about expansion and also hope. He's also a bit foolhardy. So there might be, you know, anything, um, you know, breaking about children. I also think, you know, in this month, uh, in this season ahead, probably things to do with the environment are going to be hot topics too. So it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of um, political tickets are won on the idea of um, a changing environment, whether you consider that to be true or false um, and what your views are. I imagine that Jupiter i.e. the mainstream media <laughs> and celebrity and anything in our culture that is able to go doo -doo 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 and like spread things far and wide in a way that um, us mere mortals can't, <laughs> you know, they, they kind of get a little bit of an extra boost somehow that nobody knows. How did that message get so far and so wide so quickly? Jupiter's, you know, going to be working quite well in that way too. So, interesting times. So yeah, there's a lot of those themes. Now, if we're looking, you know, there are other things to consider about the season. So yes, this is the point here, the Aries point. This is actually giving you a little preview of what I'm going to be looking at in each of the um, sun sign by sun sign um, read, um, like e each little forecast I'm going to do at the end. So I'm going to be looking at like the Aries point and, and where that falls in um, your chart. Um, I'm probably not going to talk too much about the solar eclipse, except to say that it's happening um, and that later on in this season, there's a Mars conjunction with Chiron that is happening right over that point. So whatever this point represents in your chart is, is going to be quite sensitive um, in this season ahead. So we'll be talking a little bit about that. But 
There is also um, a total solar eclipse or an eclipse video that I'm going to be releasing hot on the heels of this one. So you might want to listen in for that intel. Um, I will also be talking about the, you know, where we're getting excited and optimistic and possibly feeling a little bit anxious because of the change that is coming up. And then the next big point is Jupiter moving into Gemini around the 25th of May, which is going to get things moving again in a whole new way. If you think of Gemini, I mean, Jupiter's not um, very comfortable in the sign of Gemini. You know, it's it's his uh, like opposing sign. Um, how, however, you know, if you think of the themes of Gemini, which is about communication, um, sales, moving things from one side of the world to another. And, you know, if you think of, um, you know, the idea of Jupiter, who is absolutely big and, um, unboundaried and boisterous and kind of just getting in and doing it. I really think that, um, everything is is set to expand and get communicated out there. I really think there's going to be a time um, coming up whereby it, it almost feels like there's almost too much information for us and that we're not quite able to handle it. You know, maybe there's, um, you know, <laughs> Jupiter going into Gemini does look quite exciting. Um, and there's some really sweet aspects between um, the end of May, right the way through to mid June, and leading us into the next season. In fact, at the time of the June solstice. Um, however, I, I just think there's so much going on, and also Jupiter trine Pluto, which is looking like a really great thing. You know, um, we could be using communication to um, absolutely feel very transformed. Um, we can, you know, there's, there's just so many different ways that it could really help us. And yet there's, I just have this kind of slightly, um, apprehensive feeling that we might actually be overloaded with information. So one of the things I'm really keen to consider in this video and in the following forecasts is how can you, how can you absolutely discern in this season ahead, what is real and what's not? And how can you discern what is overloading you and what is not? And how can you also discern when you're overloaded ahead of time before you become overloaded so that you can find a new way to manage all the stuff that's happening? I think there's going to be a lot of change. Um, you know, I'm just absolutely certain there's going to be heaps of change. And it's not just because we're talking about this actual season. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about the Aries point and the significance of that, because it's about to take another big leap forwards within the next nine months or so. So I want to just, I want to talk about that. But in fact, just before we go there, I just want to thank everyone who um, supports this channel currently. Um, you know, I just think it's, it's great that you've helped me. Um, and by sponsoring me, you're giving me the chance to do a lot more. So thank you so much. Um, that's my little shout out to you guys. Thank you. I really appreciate you. Um, so let's have a look at the Aries point then. So I mentioned before the Aries point is when the sun gets to, or it's the point between Pisces and Aries. And, you know, we have our vernal equinox when the sun goes over this point. Now, I also mentioned earlier that we've got these four critical points. And so this is just illustrating where they are. And you can see they're all um, at right angles to each other. These are the four cardinal sign of Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn. Um, so these two are the equinoxes and these two are the solstices. So these are the sort of zero point energy points. I like to think of them almost like a north, south, east and west. Um, and I, to be fair, I also think of the ascendant, descendant, uh, IC and MC as my north, south, east and west as well, because they're like guidance points, you know. Um, but I think that the zero energy points of the Aries point and its other critical points that it's automatically connected with. I think these are absolutely more of um, a kind of spiritual, past life-y, karmic -y. Um, It's part of a much richer fabric than your 
ascendant, descendant, IC and MC. I think our actual angles in our birth charts are really representing the architecture of act our actual life right now, whereas the Aries point um, is said to be an incarnation point. Now, I've put in these two little links at the bottom, and I will put them in the show notes as well. Um, because if you want to learn a little bit more about Aries points, I just did a quick search, um, the darkpixie.com um, forward slash blog forward slash the hyphen zero hyphen degrees hyphen Aries hyphen point hyphen in hyphen astrology is a great link to go to. And in it, she mentioned something from um, Kim Falconer from a really long time ago. I think it's from about four or five years ago. Um, and it's one of her old um, articles and you can actually find it in the, um, I can't remember the name of the website, but it's, it's the website that allows you to go backwards in time. Like you can almost rewind the website, whatever that's called, I can't remember. But anyway, um, there's a link for it for goodvibeastrology.com forward slash zero hyphen degree hyphen Aries hyphen point. Um, and in it, Kim has, um, described the Aries point and different planets if you've got it on the Aries point in much greater detail. Suffice to say, in this video, all we need to really know right now is these points are absolutely vital and critical. Now, um, as an astrologer, um, and you know, I'm, I'm guessing anyone that's looked at a lot of charts for friends and family and stuff, you'll notice that a lot of um, people who have really strong lives and really strong themes going on in their lives either have their angles over these points, um, you know, and I see that quite a bit, <laughs> um, or they're born around the time of the equinoxes and solstices. So for me and my practice, I tend to have a lot more people contact me around the time of the equinox and solstices because, you know, people, they're living much bigger lives. You know, these points are really like if we think about the Aries point and the fact that we're always going around in this circle, um, you know, if you think the sun is making his journey all the way through Pisces, which is very much an insular and introverted position, you know, it, it's sensing things inside of himself. And then he comes to this point and it's manifested. If we think of um, the Aries point as almost like the start of the house system, you know, because there are similarities, you know, the first sign of the Zodiac, the first house in a birth chart, you know, this is the birthing point. And if you go round, um, these are the critical points in our life, you know, so we're born, we grow, we learn about some of the values and how valuable we are in our family. So we learn our place. Then we learn a little bit more about our community and the people around us. And then we start to learn what it is to really be at home. We get really conscious of it um, and the family we're growing up in. And then we start to create things. You know, as we get a bit older, we start to get creative. And, and you know, hopefully that's not killed off. Um, I mean, this can also represent schooling as well. You know, so um, this is kind of going on um, at many times in our life. And eventually we kind of are on our way up and out of our home, you know, and so this is very much about work, but it's also about the people that help us to connect and that we're relating with. And then we're coming right up. And I always think that, you know, the journey from here to here is really, this is where we're growing up and, and where we're hiding. And this is where we're being looked after by other people. And then when we're at the top, we're in charge or this shows how we show up in the world. Um, and also where we might have responsibility for other people um, and where we just have responsibility, in, you know, in general. And then, you know, um, we're sort of in our, um, you know, our ideas are spreading. It's more philanthropic. It's less about us and more about how we serve. And then this is getting a lot more communal led. But it's also if you look at this at the age of man and this is like when we're born, this is when we're a child, this is as we're leaving home and this is as we're doing well in our charts and becoming parents, sorry, in our lives and becoming parents. And then slowly we're coming back down and we're kind of dematerializing out of our life. You know, our body is is, is changing our um everything about us is changing. We kind of disappear and, and then we're reborn again. And so this is kind of like a continuous journey of almost disappearing or completely disappearing and then being reborn again. 
So this is this is really interesting. And each of these points is representing a, a kind of rebirth or how we're taking what we've experienced personally and then moving it out into the world. So these these are really, really important. And so, you know, my observation is people with these points heavily in their chart have lives that are really changing and changing in a way that they're bringing the internal and it's really, really coming out. You know, their, their lives are very much about birthing, but also the transformation that happens beyond it. Um, so it would be interesting to see where the Aries point is in your chart and to see if you've got any planets on these, these points. Um, something else I notice about, um, like this is a chart of somebody that I've worked with before. Um, and you see they're born with, um, their son at zero degrees, zero seven in the sign of Aries. Um, and you know, they've, they've had a really, um, interesting life and it's had lots of ups and downs. It's had a lot of pain as well as a lot of joy and a lot of intuition. So this person has brought all the intuition of the, you know, everything that's just come from the inside and is birthing it out. But with this zero energy, it's also in a initiatory place, you know, it's initiating things and it starts from nothing and it's fresh and it's new and it's ready to be imprinted upon. And I see a lot of people who have this kind of energy where they can create something out of nothing or seemingly nothing. And a lot of people project onto them. It's almost like their energy fields are so new and so different and, and people really don't understand them. And they're pushing their ideas on them and saying, Oh, you're like this, or you're like this. And so people notice that they've got a different energy about them. It's fascinating. Now, Obviously, that's if you're born with something at one of these zero points. But what happens when a planet moves over them? So, you know, if I go back to um, um, our chart, you know, so we've got the sun here moving over this zero point energy. Now, wherever that zero point energy is in your chart, it's saying to the world, it's saying to the collective, you know, the sun is coming back across the ecliptic. The sun is moving. It's bringing something unconscious to be birthed in the real world. There is this changing energy. Now, imagine what it would be like if Pluto went over this point. Now, um, I may not even live to see that. <laughs> it's going to be happening in a long, long time in the future. Um, but, you know, when Uranus went over this point or when Jupiter went over this point, any slow moving planet, it, it, it creates, um, a whole new energy. It's birthing something brand new. Now, the reason I say this is because, you know, Mercury's already passed this point. Chiron's passed it. Jupiter's passed it. Uranus has passed it. Um, Pluto won't be getting there anytime, <laughs> anytime soon. Saturn's still, a, you know, a, a way off it. It's not going to go over there just, you know, in this year ahead, uh, sorry, in this, you know, towards the end of this year, it's, it's not really there yet. Um, so what have we got that's actually going to go over this point, um, between this sun, <laughs> um, you know, what, what's, what's, what's going to move over this? What's impacting this? Well, first of all, we're going to have Venus coming over it soon after the equinox and we're going to have Mar um, Mars coming over it soon after the equinox. And the moon is obviously going to go over this point as the moon does every single month. But what really interests me is the next big astrological, not body, because it's not actually a planet. It's the North node. You know, currently the North node is at 15 degrees in the sign of Aries, but the North node is moving backwards. Like the North node is a calculation. It's a point. It's not, it's not, um, like, you know, it's not an observable point. It's, it's something that's created, but you know, anyone that has studied it and looked at the importance of it has noticed that it carries a vibration. It carries, it carries a significance. Now the North node is linked in as being, um, very much about our, um, forward trajectory about a direction, about the lessons we're learning quite often linked into karma, like what karmic things are going on for us. What are we struggling with? You know, what comes up for us so much? It almost trips us up and we go round and round 
all these stories again and again, hopefully refining them and moving on up. You know, so it's interesting that this karmic point of uh, the North Node, which is really helping us find our destiny, really helping us get back on track, not the track that maybe we think we need to be on, but the track that our life seems to be attuned to. So we've got this point and at some point, not in the distant, you know, not in the too distant future, is going to be crossing this, this zero point Aries. Um, that's significant. You know, what I think is going on is that, you know, this, this um, March equinox is really giving us the starter. It's almost like, um, you know, someone is saying cosmically, on your marks. Um, and, um, you know, that's when the sun goes over this point get set. That's when Venus goes over this point and kind of Mars as well. And then go. And that's when the North node goes over this point. So I really feel like, you know, the sun, then Venus, then Mars is really the preamble for what's coming with the North node crossing this because the North node crosses this point every 18 odd years, 18.9 years, I think it is. Um, so it's not a common thing to happen but it's going to cross over this point. And then we've got the rebirthing energy of the zero point Aries, this kind of idea of a rebirth, the idea that, um, you know, we, we can create something um, and we can be quite direct in it. And then we've also got the North node energy. Um, so it feels like there's a bit of a plan hatching. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's why I just wanted to kind of bring your attention to the idea of the North Node and the Aries point because there's, there's, there's something kind of interesting going on. Now, there is also something, um, yeah, so just to show you, you've got Venus going over there on the 5th of April, the Moon going over on the 7th, Mars going on the 30th, and then the Moon has another 10 Moon cycles. But then that's when the true North Node goes over on the 11th of January, 2025. Now I put money on it that there's going to be a hell of a fuss <laughs> made by astrologers in the lead up to this big event, the 11th of January. Um, uh, depending on whether they're a fan of the true North Node or the mean North Node, that's happening a bit later. Is it on the 29th of January, 2025? But, you know, this is, this is a critical time as we're getting that far ahead. Um, and then eventually the North Node is going to also go into a conjunction with Neptune. So January and February of next year are going to be huge. So why am I linking these up? You know, so we've got the true North Node going over this point, And I feel it's a bit of an activation to our soul path. You know, there's something catalyzing and changing going on with the um, zero point energy zero point Aries energy. And also we've got the North node. So it's this idea of a soul path. So I really think in this time from the 20th of March, we're all being kind of turned around on our axes. <laughs> you know, if, if we're not facing the right direction, I think this season ahead is going to reorientate, reorient us to the right direction that we need to be in. Um, so if you're already quite conscious about what is right for you and whether you're serving, um, it, whether you're performing and being in your life in the way that really serves your soul purpose, if you believe in those, then you'll probably just get a, a stronger feeling of the rightness of it and, and, and start to feel more, um, uh, more increase in flow. You know, I think that's a really good way of looking at your life. If you ask yourself, am I in flow? Is things, are things easy for me? Are things attracting to me? Uh, am I, am I finding that I'm initiating things with ease and joy and glory? Cause if you are, you know, you're on the right path. And yet if you're thinking as you're coming into this next season, oh my God, things are so difficult, crikey, everything's so stodgy. How come every time I take a step out in this direction, I get pushback or something like this? I think this, this next season ahead is going to be showing us where we're a bit stodgy, where we need to let go of something and reorientate ourselves, reorient ourselves, sorry, um, because this activation soul path energy is coming up. And I see this as, you know, a big step forwards. <laughs> 
Now, before I um, actually look at the overall um, readings on a sort of chart by chart basis, sign by sign basis, I just want to share something else with you. Um, you know that that kind of links together the North Node and also the Aries point, and that is there's um, a type of charting that some astrologers use, and it's called draconic charts. Now, draconic charts are said to be charts that really highlight your past lives and the entirety of your promise, the entirety of your story. Um, and so there's something very otherworldly about it, you know. Um, and and basically, the, you'll see these two charts and they look quite the same, actually. You know, all the planets um, and asteroids <laughs> that are in that chart are all in the same equal space. They're all in the same pattern to each other. And yet you'll see that this one has the ascendant in Scorpio and this one here has the ascendant at zero degrees in the sign of Pisces. You'll also see there's these little Ds on all the different star signs. So this is this is the Placidus birth chart. It's actually mine. Um, and then this is my draconic chart. Now, what makes the chart draconic? Because it doesn't really look like anything's changed apart from it looks like we've shifted the outer ring, which is what's happened. Um, so what's happened is, if you see here, my north node is at 10 degrees in the sign of Sagittarius. Um, with a draconic chart, um, the the north node is shifted to zero degrees, zero, zero in the sign of Aries. It is shifted to the Aries point because the Aries point is seen as this initiation into life, the, the start of the life. And the north node is seen almost like a soul contract. And so the two of them are coming together um, and by bringing those two together, but then laying out the rest of the chart exactly in the same pattern, um, that's how the draconic chart is created. So in, in this instance, um, whatever difference needs to be created to get my north node dialed back to zero degrees um, in the sign of Aries every single planet has been dialed back to that same spot, which is why they've all moved. Now, this actually is said to describe the entirety of your energy and um, a lot more about the flavor of your energy that might not have fully come through in this lifetime. And, um, <laughs> you know, I, I rarely look at this because I, I tend to like stay where, you know, in the things that I know about and, and less in, in this realm. Um, it's not to say it's a, it's a bad realm to be in, but one thing that I noticed when I was looking at this is because my um, ascendant is at 10 degrees in the sign of, of um, Scorpio and my north node is at 10 degrees in the sign of Sagittarius, to get my north node to zero point, it's taken my ascendant to zero point and the movement of it has moved because I've got a lot of planets around 10 and 11 degrees um, and nine degrees. I've got a lot of planets now, apparently in my overall soul plan um, at 29 degrees, like Pluto, um, Neptune, um, my moon, um, you know, and, and the 29th degree is said to be the anuretic degree where apparently things break down and things are expressed very differently to their normal script. And then I've got a lot at zero degrees as well. So I've got Sarah's at zero degrees, my ascendant at zero degrees, my north and south node at zero degrees, obviously. Um, so it just feels like, you know, the entirety, if I was to read this for a client, um, you know, I would be saying, wow, you know, like <laughs> you were actually born for something that maybe you're not quite using right now. You know, it feels like, you know, the theme of like the 29th degree, like the breaking down of energy and the restarting of energy at zero degrees is really describing, um, you know, somebody that's almost living between worlds or living between lives and, you know, uh, maybe involved in changing like the, the death and dying process and the rebirthing process. So, you know, maybe I'm meant to be doing a lot more in that. Who knows? But um, I just thought I'd share it because seeing as we we're talking about the Aries point and zero degrees and also the North Node. So, if there is a side of astrology that is revering the connection between the North Node and the Aries point of zero, zero, zero degrees in the sign of Aries, then what does this mean about 
the time we're coming into, literally from now, leading all the way to January 2025. What are we working on right now to completely bring forth our overall soul destiny plan and bring it through into this life? So that's my big question. <laughs> so, yeah, when I'm looking at the... Um, when I'm looking at the forecasts shortly, I'm going to be saying, what are you activating in your chart? What are you preparing to birth right now? So I'm assuming that we're all on this journey to bring forth everything from our overall soul plan into this reality. So yeah, this, <laughs> this um, forecast is about to get a little bit freakier than maybe you were expecting. But anyway, Welcome back to part two of this um, this uh, video about the astrological new year 2024. Happy new year. <laughs> so um, in this section, I'm going to be doing the forecasts for all 12 signs of the zodiac. Um, and I'm going to be looking at them in the following way. So um, the first thing I'm going to do um, as part of a forecast is give you a sense of what's really activating in your chart right now. Um, as, as a focal point, I guess, for how you might want to be, um, yeah, taking action, um, coming up. So, you know, what areas of your chart are lighting up right now? So the Aries point, which I spoke about in part one, um, is, is this point here where the sun is literally just going over the Aries point on the 20th, marking the first, um, season change of the year. Um, and this is really showing you how we're manifesting our reality. Then each of the other zero points, the cardinal zero points, which represent the equinoxes and the, in, in particular, the seasons and obviously the solstices. So these two are the equinoxes. These two are the solstices. Each of these points is also um, kind of energized at the time of this season change and is also bringing about a, a bit of a, a manifestation for you. So it's really getting you into that feeling um, of what happens every time, in fact, we go through one of these season changes, what is really activating. Um, and then for the second part of the forecast, um, I'm also looking at um, the sort of generalities of, of what's coming up and when it's coming up. So it obviously starts with the um, equinox, we've got the solar eclipse. We've also got the Jupiter Uranus conjunction on the 21st of April. We've also got Jupiter going into Gemini. We've got a Mars Chiron conjunction, um, on the 29th of March. And then also we've got this very powerful trine between Jupiter and Pluto. So I'm going to be talking about, you know, the sort of architecture of this, of this season for your ascendant in this month ahead. Now that's where, um, it brings me back to the same situation that I find myself in every time I do these forecasts. And that is lots of people ask me, they say, Louisa, why are you doing, um, ascendants and not sun signs? And, um, really, uh, and also why am I doing whole sign forecasts? And so, um, first things first, I do, I look at these from a whole sign chart perspective because it's, um, I guess it's a model that works with the most amount of people. Um, because if we're looking at a Placidus system, um, you know, based on your, um, like latitude, you may well find that you've got some houses that are massive and some that are really, really tiny. So, um, you know, the whole sign I think is a really good model that applies to so many people. We can all take a message from it. Now, if you do want to, um, you know, look at the sign and, you know, pick the sign of your sun sign and listen to that forecast by all means do. I think whatever we're intuitively drawn to, we should do. Um, and we should, we should follow. Um, but these are actually really designed towards your ascendant. Now, um, for those of you that are really, um, you know, well-versed with astrology and you know what your birth chart looks like and you're us using, say, a Placidus system, um, you might choose to look at the star sign that best represents the position of your Aries point. So I'll leave that to your discretion to work out for yourselves. Um, obviously, if you do want a personalized reading, um, you'll see my uh, details but I never get this right with these screens. <laughs> there we go that way. Um, if you do want something personalized where, you know, I actually look at your birth chart, your individual birth chart, um, 
you know, then just give me a shout. All my links are below um, and you can just uh, feel free to book some space in my diary and we can take it from there. So um, I, I leave that as an option to you as well if these kinds of uh, generalized forecasts aren't so good. But have a listen anyway, because you may well find there's some nuggets in there that will help you in navigating this season ahead. Now, that brings me on to the last part of this. You know, so what happens if you don't know what your ascendant is? Um, and this is where I say, easiest way to find it is to go to www.astro-seek.com and then you'll see on the far left side free horoscopes charts and calculations use that menu go down to ascendant rising sign calculator and you'll find the time place and date of birth um and all you have to do sorry you have to put in your time place and date of birth and hit enter um, and then it will tell you what your um, ascending sign is and also the degree that it's in as well. Um, so anyway, I hope that is helpful. So without further ado, let's now look at um, the the ascendants on a sign by sign basis um, and give you a bit of a forecast, give you a heads up for this next season. So Aries Ascendant, um, happy astrological new year to you. I'm looking at this in two parts. Um, this is the first part where we're looking at what's, what you're orienting to in this, in this um, season ahead. So the focal point here really is where the Aries point is showing up in your chart. And it's, it's right here. You know, you've recently come out of this time of, um, it's almost like being in hibernation, um, whether you chose to do it or not, it's, it's almost like life is giving you this small pause so that, you know, as the, um, as the new astrological year starts, you're able to just dive into life again and, and really, um, really give it, give it something, you know? So it's like your energies are returning back. It feels like it's time to um, move forwards again. Now, the Aries point in particular is showing how you're manifesting your reality right now. And for you, it's it's very much um, embodied. It's very much um, felt physically in your body. And it's very much tied into your identity. You know, um, you know, you may well have found that in the last couple of months, you've had time to really think over who you really are and who you're really becoming. And you might have realized that the sort of the image, the brand, um, you know, the, the flavor of who you are has changed because that happens every time we grow, every time we go through some challenge in particular, like the challenges going on in your sign right now between, you know, the North Node and Chiron, for instance, you know, you've been learning, learning, learning about yourself and what it is to be you. So this is really um, the start of quite an interesting um season for you, uh, taking you from the 20th of March right the way through to the um, 20th of June, so that you can learn to express yourself more fully, you know, really come into your persona so much more than you've ever done before. Um, I say that quite poignantly, because obviously, every time this year comes around, you know, this time of year comes around, it's about you embracing who you are as a person. And yet, um, you know, this, you know, in the lead up to this moment with the North Node and Chiron, it almost feels like a missing piece has just come into understanding. It's like you have a much greater sense of who you are. And of course, that new sense of who you are is going to be also impacting these points in your chart. So by default, because of the new sense of who you are and, you know, what is emerging from you, it's also changing your feelings. Um, and of course, as your feelings are changing, that's um, creating a difference in how you're interacting with the world. You know, what you're bringing from um, the privacy of you and bringing it into more of a creative place. Um, because of that, it's also having a knock on effect because obviously we all have an urge to relate to others. Um, you know, to a greater or lesser degree. And of course, the more you're learning about yourself and who you are and what your needs are, the more that's impacting how you're relating to other people. So you are birthing a new way of being in relationships. And of course, because of who you are now birthing yourself as, it's also changing the way you are producing things in your world. You know, like, what are you called to give and bring forwards um, almost like your particular role in life, you know, how is that um, affecting what you want to produce? So I would say this is a very, very um, um, clear season for you. 
um, and it's giving you the energy to clear up some of the miscommunications, that feeling, those feelings of misgivings, the feelings of insecurity and uncertainty that you've had um, since the start of this year. Moving on to the second part, then, I want to just pay a little bit of attention to um, these distinct phases. So from the 20th of March until the 19th of April, when we're in Aries stage, yes, we've got um, quite a lot of fire at this point. So, yes, we are kind of meeting the world kind of like a big slap. It's like, yes, here I am. Uh, pay attention to me. And within the first week, on the 8th of April, we've got the total solar eclipse. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about that because um, I, I'm actually about to release a video about the eclipse the eclipse season of uh, spring 2024 and possibly even the next side of it, you know, the autumn 2024 eclipse seasons and how they are fitting together. So there's a lot more about that in there. But suffice to say, this total solar eclipse is absolutely... Um, it's fiery and it's picking up on your insecurities. You know, this solar eclipse has a conjunction with Chiron and it's exact. Um, so it, whatever you've been mulling over about yourself is coming up. So yes, you're making these decisions about who you are and how you feel yourself to be. And it's like from the eighth, you're getting this really big test to truly embody who you are. Um, it, it's likely to get a bit triggering and, um, it's worth paying it some attention and working out what is triggering you so that you can find yourself in a, in a stronger position because you'll be reminded of this around the 29th of May when Mars makes a connection to Chiron. And so this, you know, everything that has been taking place in this year ahead to do with Chiron and the North Node um, and the eclipse, the sun and the moon, and then Mars, it's, it's all going to come into this really, really strong, um, almost like a release point. So, uh, you know, keep your eye on that. That's going to be happening in May. So, yeah, so April, <laughs> we've got this total solar eclipse um, and we've also got the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction um, on the 21st of April as well, which is affecting your second house. So, you know, whilst you are going through these changes and considering how you're wanting to be in the world, there's also this sense of excitement and anticipation um, about what you are producing because there are some really sort of creative and new and innovative and quite expanding technologies or ideas that you've got. You know, it, it really is changing how you value yourself and what about yourself you're putting out there. Now, as we're going into um, May, um, which is... Um, like represented here really by the sign of Taurus, but <laughs> actually during May time, Jupiter um, is going into um, Gemini on the 25th. So it moves from here on the, you know, in the space of a month from the 21st of April to the 25th of May, Jupiter moves from this point to here and he goes into the sign of Gemini. And all of a sudden it feels like your communications, everything that you need to know, everything that you've ever wanted to learn, um, everything that you're learning currently all comes into clear view. It's also creating a much more sociable feeling for you um, in terms of how you fit into the world, how you fit into your local neighborhood, um, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I did mention, you know, at the end of May, there is this sort of re-triggering point. So just be aware of that when it, you know, as you feel that come in, just really watch what's going on for you. So it may well be that as Jupiter is going into Gemini and you're getting a lot more social, that 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 extra attention is the thing that reminds you of what is triggering you. So it's really important that as you <laughs> remember what it is that has been playing out this whole year at key times, that you get a, a, a get a handle on it somehow. Because, you know, if it gets triggered at the end of May, it's likely to be in more of a public place within your community. So it's important to watch out for that. The last thing that I think is um, a really strong aspect that is really going to see you um, to the end of the season, and that's the Jupiter trine Pluto, which is giving us all this moment of strength, this moment of um, power, this moment to really transform things, to make some of the changes that we've already initiated, to make them permanent even, and to make them almost like a springboard for moving forward in life. You know, so I see it as a really, really good point. Um, so as this comes up on the 3rd of June, I mean, you'll feel it coming in for about five or six days beforehand. Um, and to be fair, it's, it's coming in a lot longer than that, but you'll really start to feel it. 
Um, but this is a time where we can really start to manifest um, what really makes us quite alive. Um, we're quite serious. You know, we are really wanting to make a difference and, and to make, um, yeah, a lot more permanent, but also vast and magnificent changes for ourselves. But this is really branching out from your local community into the global community. So you might well decide um, that there's some kind of community action that is helping you to become a stronger person within your persona, to feel like you have a greater level of um power and influence. I don't know, but it's got a lot to do with the influencing um, ability that you have within the communities that you're serving and in, in the way that people are seeing you. So it's interesting. You start this season off by wondering who am I and answering that question for yourself. And then by the end of the season, um, you know, you're helping other people see who you really are. So it's a really interesting season ahead for you, Aries Ascendant. I hope that's been useful. Before you go, um, if you <laughs> if you like a bit of a laugh um, and something a bit lighthearted, I do have a show that I'm launching on the 20th of March. It's a live one um, and and it's going to be fun. I've got a four, uh, four other astrologer friends, uh, Alexandra, Jasmina, Jim and Kimberly. I've got my husband hosting and it's a quiz show all about the signs of the Zodiac. It's not highbrow astrology, but it will be fun and it, it will be lighthearted and I'm quite sure there's going to be some great insight that comes out from that. So please do join us for that and look for it um, in the uh, what's coming up on my channel. But anyway, thanks for listening so far. Have a great um, spring and see you again real soon. Bye for now. So Taurus Ascendant, happy astrological new year. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Are you excited? So this is a two part um, forecast that I'm doing for you. Um, the first part is really to see what you're activating in your chart right now and kind of how you're orienting uh, life, you know, what is occurring to you. Now, to be fair, the the same energies come up each time, uh, like at this time, every single year. So for instance, at the time of the um, spring solstice or the March solstice or even autumn, what am I saying solstice? Equinox. So at the time of the March equinox, whether you're in the northern or southern, uh, northern or southern hemisphere, this equinox is setting you up um, for how you're manifesting your reality. And, and it's, it's really bringing forth a, a kind of sense of strident energy. And so I think it's always very interesting to see how that is showing up at this time of year for you. Now, with this point kind of being emphasized, it's also by default creating um, an energy around these points as well, you know, because whatever is here is always interacting in an opposition or a square with these points. These are very sort of like magical points in your chart. So here's how I see this occurring for you. And um, it might be useful to pay some attention to how you are usually doing things at this time of year, what is usually occurring to you. So for instance, if you've got Taurus Ascendant, um, the sun has just gone from your 11th house and into your 12th. So the start of spring is usually met with um, a level of introspection. You know, it's it's heading into the 12th house. It's highlighting all of those little things about yourself that it almost feels like, you know, when you put cakes in an oven and you put the oven on and and you keep looking and it's not quite done yet. There's still something to work out. There's still something going on with the cake mix and the interaction with the heat. It needs to be in its little, and it's locked away in its little oven. And so how I see it is you're not done baking yet. You know, you, you're not, you've not fully come through um, understanding who you are. You're going on not a crisis of confidence necessarily, but you're going into a bit of a deep dive into who you are, why you are, um, how you are, et cetera. You know, it's, it's like a, a moment of reflection. It's almost like the dark night before the, before the new dawn. Um, it is, um, for people with a Taurus ascendant, it's, a, it's a moment to just go inside a little bit and, and just kind of 
lick your wounds, um, think, okay, where do I want to be in about a month's time when I'm launching into the, the true Taurus season? It's, it's a time just to pause and to collect all the things and resources and inner resources that you might need for the next part of your journey. So I think this time of year is always, um, you know, creating this moment of reflection. And because of that, and, and because, it, you know, it's almost a time when you're actual true persona is, is broken down somewhat. You know, it's, it's almost like you're letting go of some facets of who you are so that new possibilities can come forwards. Um, and to be fair, during this time, you know, if we think about since January to right now, where we are now, right now, you've also had um, the North Node and Chiron coming into this long, slow conjunction, and now they're slowly separating. But all of those issues have been going on here. So, you know, you're already well aware of how you're evolving, how you're developing, and, and what might be coming up now. And that is, I think, over this next month is almost like a, a sense of an opening, a sense of a resolution, a sense that actually all of this has a really good purpose. And it's really putting me in the right place to be doing my life properly. Now, because of this reflection, it's also creating a change here around the cancer point, you know, and it's it's really showing how your new feelings, like your feelings of uncertainty, your feelings of curiosity about yourself, your feelings of um, calm, quiet patience are actually kind of manifesting in your local community. So you're not quite as vocal as usual. You're not quite as certain as usual. Um, you know, right now there is this feeling of possibility brought forwards by the solitude that you're allowing yourself. Now, also the Libra point, which is also activated at the time of the um, um, astrological new moon, because of your um, curious and introspective look at yourself, it's also affecting the way you're choosing to relate to people. So you're probably not being quite so certain about how you want your relationships to be. You're probably most likely allowing a lot more space for the partners that you have in your life to really express themselves. And it also um, is allowing you to um, relate to the people in your sort of physical day-to-day -day life of work, rest and play, which is very much captured here. Um, you know, you're giving the whole way you do your um, organized life, you know, you're not being so strict on yourself. The last thing that I would say is your urge to produce, which is absolutely represented by um, a zero point Capricorn energy, again, um, is not so tightly focused. So you may well find, and especially seeing as this is essentially um, heralding your ninth house energy, you know, your urge to produce now is a lot more expansive, a lot more changed, a lot more different. So you're really in a very sort of different headspace around the time of the um, um, March equinox. Now, if we look at the entirety of the season, you know, the first month of it um, taking us from the sun going into the sign of Aries until the um, 19th of April when it goes into the sign of Taurus. It's interesting, you know, we've got we've got the changing of the season and right, you know, a, a week later, we've got the total solar eclipse. Now, this total solar eclipse is picking up on the earlier questions and insecurities and um, who am I type things you're asking yourself when the North Node and Chiron came together. Um, so there is the reawakening of this and you've got another chance to um, consider it, revise it um, and get clearer about it. Also happening in April, we've got the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, which I'm very excited for you. You know, it's happening in your first house. And I, I would say because of all the questioning you've been doing, because of the space you're creating for yourself, um, what is occurring with this Jupiter and Uranus conjunction is this possibility for a really new type of you to come forwards. You know, it's not so much about um, creating a new business unless you are your business, but it's really creating a new sense of who you are. And it's really um, giving you um, almost the permission to be a lot freer, a lot zanier, a lot weirder, a lot more creative, a lot more inventive, a lot more 
um, unpredictable. It's giving you permission to be actually quite untorian. You know, it's really giving you the chance to surprise and, and delight yourself and possibly shock and excite other people. So, you know, there is a less responsible Taurus ascendant person emerging, but is that such a bad thing is what I would ask you. It's, it's a feeling of liberation. Like, you know, you've taken, you know, imagine you've been wearing a pair of shoes that are too tight or a hat that's too tight. You know, it's almost felt like the persona that you've had has been a little bit too tight, a little bit too controlled. And so around the time of this um, conjunction, you can take these tight bindings off and feel yourself expand beautifully. Um, then from the 19th of April, as the sun is moving into this area, again, the focus is very much on how you are releasing yourself and how you are being a lot more yourself. Um, you're, it's, it's almost like you're showing people who you are now. You're not just feeling it in, intuitively. You're not just processing it and keeping quiet. Because let's face it, Taurus ascendant people can be a little bit quiet. You know, they're not always the most forthcoming people. They tend to keep their own counsel. But it does feel like you're able to talk a lot more about who you really are and, and and what you really love and enjoy about life. Yeah. So it's pretty exciting all, all the same. So as I was, um, talking, um, you know, towards the end of the Taurus period, we come into, um, we come into the Gemini season and that starts on the 20th of May. So the sun comes to this point on the 20th of May and then things are starting to change quite considerably. So on the 25th of May, Jupiter is mo it's essentially moved in a month from here to here. So Jupiter comes into the sign of Gemini on the 25th of May um, and things start to speed up in terms of your earnings, in terms of um, the resources that are available to you, in terms of your ideas about how you can generate more income for yourself and also about how you value yourself. You may well find that you are having these philosophical um, discussions with yourself, given that Gemini is so talkative <laughs> and Jupiter is so expansive, you know, you may well be having these very sort of like long conversations with yourself about what value am I bringing? You know, it's not just about resources. It's also about our internal value systems. So yeah, this, this, this could be, um, actually quite beneficial. I mean, like on, um, <laughs> as you'll find when I actually do the Jupiter and Gemini, which would be a lot, you know, that will be in a couple of months time. You'll notice that, you know, Jupiter going into the second house is generally seen as a really good and fortuitous time. It's seen as a time when our value systems can um, increase, our opportunities to earn money can increase. However, I would say we have to have some good things in place before that happens. It's almost like Jupiter is there to inflame and enhance anything we've got going on. However, if we haven't already built some foundations underneath, there's nothing really for Jupiter to climb and expand from. So, you know, if you haven't got anything in place to, to help you lift up, you may well find that Jupiter comes in and um, inflames how you see yourself and your own value. So you might see yourself as a lot more important than you might actually be in reality, or you might actually start to turn on yourself and say, oh, you know, I must have a value, but I can't seem to find it. So it becomes a big issue. So yeah, in, in preparation for Jupiter coming into here, in preparation, you know, for, for the Gemini season from the 20th of May, might I suggest <laughs> that, you know, you have a sort of clearer idea of your value around, um, you know, the 19th to 21st of April, you know, as this Jupiter Uranus is coming into its, um, into its conjunction as, and as the sun is crossing this line coming into your first house, because that's the perfect time to decide what your value is and to start practicing it and start to lay some of the groundwork down. So as Jupiter comes into this, you're not left floundering. In fact, there's, there's this momentum that is growing in terms of how you can use money and find extra resources and also find the value in yourself um, and talk about yourself as somebody who does have value and stature, which I think is quite useful. Um, it's also important to do because just a few days later, right at the end of May and beginning of June on May 29th, Mars is in a conjunction on Chiron. So again, this point is, 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 um, repoked. If, if you've got a sore point anywhere, it's being, you know, your sore point is being reactivated. So again, 
you know, this is why I've spoken so um, so much about the Chiron and North Node conjunction earlier this year, because it's really showing you where our self-sabotage is and where our no-go areas are. And of course, anywhere we've got a no-go area, we have a vulnerability that we're not prepared to look at. So it is worth looking at it so that, you know, it doesn't become a big deal. Last thing that I think is really quite exciting and has a generic um, and very powerful um, effect. Um, but I say generic because it could um, affect all areas of your life. Um, but the Jupiter trine Pluto um, on June the 3rd, you'll feel it coming in for a couple of weeks beforehand and and thereafter. Um, you know, this is um, a really lovely um, aspect it is creating the opportunity to transform and expand in a really, really big way. It's very stable. It's very idealistic because it's in air signs. And for you, it's really crossing, you, you know, it's really connecting your house of money and your house of career. So if you like re-listen to this forecast, you'll see that all of these things are moving you towards your true value and um, your true output through knowing your true value. So if we go to the beginning, you know, you're really asking, what is my purpose and what is my value? You know, who am I and why am I here? And you're answering that for yourself. And so as you're going into the summer solstice or the June solstice, you've really answered your question and you've linked up that inquiry, you found out who you are, you found out your value from that. And because of that, your value is now radiating in the world and being able to produce some results. So there you go, Taurus. Before you go, I've got one last thing to share with you. And that is on the 20th of March, I'm having a fun astrological quiz. It's a live show. So it's a pop-up show. You know, it's, it's one of these rare events, you know, don't always do lives, but you can join us in the chat room if you've got questions, if you want to put a question to us. I'm joined by four fantastic astrologers, um, Alexandra, Jasmina, Jim, and Kimberly. I'm also joined by my husband, who is going to be the host of the show, and he's going to be maintaining order. But we're going to be talking about all signs of the zodiac, the good, the bad, the ugly. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a bit silly. Uh, hopefully not offensive, um, but hey, who knows where it's going to go. Um, but it's there as a resource, and I think it'd be good fun. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, put it in your diary. It's on the 20th of March to celebrate the Astrological New Year. But anyway, have a great new season. Have a great spring or autumn, wherever you are in the world. But um, if that's been useful, um, then I'm so pleased. Lots of love to you, Taurus. Bye for now. Hey, Gemini Ascendant, happy new astrological year to you. So this is a two-part forecast for you. The first bit, I'm really looking at um, um, the actual Aries point itself, which is um, the, the place where the sun is just crossing over at the time of the March equinox. Um, and because this point is activated, by default, um, it's also creating uh, a sort of square energy towards this point, the Cancer point, um, an opposition energy towards the Libra zero point, and also a square to the Capricorn um, zero point energy. These all are all the angles of the um, um, two equinoxes and the two solstices. You know, these are um, very, very important points astrologically. So I'm going to be talking about this. And then in the second part, I'm going to be talking about your uh, new season on a month by month basis and what to look out for. So hopefully this will be quite comprehensive for you. So the first thing, um, and you know, this happens every time at this time of year, the sun is crossing the Aries point at the same point in your chart every year. So if this, this part of the reading, <laughs> this actual page could actually be useful for you every year at this time. But anyway, what is the Aries point helping you to manifest in your reality at this time? And, you know, as I see it, you know, leading up to this point, you've been really quite focused on your actual production and your output in a very real way. You know, you've been producing a lot of things um, in terms of work and in terms of um, increased status, possibly increased responsibility. It has a lot to do with being a parent or being kind of parental, being a mentor, being a guide, being a coach, being a boss. You know, it, it has everything to do with taking control of your life. 
And as you come to this point every year at the time of the March equinox, what happens is your attention is taken into manifesting this, this collected energy that you've been working on, on being better and stronger and a lot more responsible. And it's manifesting into a very social and networked way. So it's like you realize, yes, I can get this far on my own. And now it's it's naturally attracting a pull or attraction from other people. You know, um, either people within your existing networks are getting involved or your, uh, your, your new attraction point, your new um, level in the world as you see it, your new vibration is bringing in new people that can help you manifest your dreams. And it's also because you, some of your energy can help them manifest theirs. So, you know, on a mundane level, the 11th house often shows the global vision if there, if there can be such a thing. You know, it's, it's very much showing um, maybe the global vision of the world, but um, on a smaller scale, the global vision of your community or the global vision of your family or the global vision of your country, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very networked and it's very much about how your new standing in the world can be um, manifesting a reality more socially. Um, now, because of this more social leaning, it's also having a knock-on effect. So your cancer point, which shows where your feelings are urging you outwards, because of your new um, connectivity and your greater networking skills, what's actually cu coming up is you know, it's less about who you are and how you're recognized, but more about the value you're bringing to people. And so your va your your value systems are also being absolutely um, upgraded or changed and considered right now. And you've got a lot of feelings attached to the value of what it is that you do. It's less about who you are, but it's more about um, what vibration are you? You know, what are you putting out there? And because of that, um, because of these two, um, it's also affecting the way you are relating to other people. So, for instance, you know, um, you know, the, the, the point at which um, you might be relating to other people um, is affected by um, you wanting to share more, you know, you wanting to be less um, clingy over um, how your career goes. Uh, and so there's a lot more of a collaborative, creative energy. So it's not just about um, creating in terms of um, business and networking and showing up in the world, maybe through organizations and um, um, and parties or belief systems and things like that. But you're also wanting to co-create with your loved ones, you know, so you are drawing them into your most basic of creations, your most private of creations. So it's opening up your relationships so much more. I would say deepening them. You know, you can't, you can't be so flippant with people at this time of year, there is a much greater deepening within your relationships. Um, and it's also um, having a knock on effect in terms of how you're producing your urge to produce stuff in the world um, is also changing. So for instance, um, what I, I see as being quite important for you is that, um, you know, the idea of longevity and um, going through um, um, rites of passage, going through change and transformation. So because the way you are showing up in your world, which is about your 10th house, and because you're changing that and becoming a lot more networked, it's also making you think about the timeline of your projects and how they are naturally leading on to other projects and naturally birthing other projects. The eighth house is a place of mystery and secrets. Um, and it's also a place of other people's money. So it could also be bringing in a, a much greater source of income or funding opportunities, which also is, is something matched by the 11th house. There's a lot of money sloshing around for you know, for big projects that involve a lot of different, um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Shareholders, I guess. Um, so yeah, I, I'm seeing that the value systems of money and sharing and expanding are really, really key for you right now, Gemini Ascendant. Now, as we move on this on a month by month basis, so this is representing the Aries point, the equinox, you know, so 
um, until the 19th of April, you, we're really in the airy season. And again, it's it's all about the sociability and the networking. Now, during that time, we've also got the to total solar eclipse on April the 8th. Now, this is a really important point because it's a point that has already been um, massaged <laughs> or like a sore point that's already had somebody's finger kind of like really um, sort of triggering it. Um, it's it's almost like your Achilles heel that that somebody is manipulating there. And, and that has come up your sore spot about how it is to be within um, – to be within a large network or a large group of people. Now, you know, you'd think with Gemini Ascendant, you know, Gemini's being the most social sign um, and being very talkative and very much into um, sharing ideas and moving quite quickly through things. You might think that the 11th house energy is really, really welcomed by them and, and a place of great security. But in actual fact, with the North Node and Chiron, um, going through this part of your chart, some of the weaknesses about being so connected have come up for you. So you may well have realized that, um, you know, the 11th house is drawing you deeper into a cause. It's drawing you deeper into the group purpose and it's drawing you deeper than maybe you're comfortable with Gemini Ascendant. You might find that you much prefer to be um, lighter and freer and be able to move around a lot more. So that might be where some of this pain is coming from, but whatever has been coming up for you um, in terms of your insecurities socially, um, you know, over this last two month period or so is reactivating with this really strong total solar eclipse. You know, if you are going through mergers or, you know, creating exciting new opportunities to work with other people, then this is your time. And you might also need to get very clear about where there is a pain point, you know, where you're not entirely sure, where you don't feel entirely safe because it does need a bit of attention because um, at the end of May, that point is sort of like re-poked. <laughs> so get really clear about that during the um, eclipse time. Something else happening in April is the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, which is is also awakening things in your 12th house area. So it's sort of igniting your sense of intuition. Again, it's another thing that the Gemini energy isn't that comfortable with. You know, the Gemini energy really likes known facts. It likes to see right and wrong, black and white. Um, left and right, you know, it really needs to characterize things and categorize things. It really likes rationality over intuition. It's not to say you're not intuitive. It's to say that you actually are much more comfortable usually in a, in a more rational way of seeing things. It's easier to weigh up um, the pros and cons of things. And so this this beautiful Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in this sort of 12th area of your chart is absolutely ramping up all things that are irrational, all things that are intuitive and magic and inventive and creative and kind of off the scale. You know, this is the time actually where your mental genius can really come into play because when you are using that flash of insight, the deep insight, as well as rationality, you become unstoppable. Um, but it, it's quite possible that the fear of unknown things, unquantifiable things may well put you off from exploring that. But definitely something there is opening up for you in terms of your unconscious way of processing. Now, as we um, hit the 19th of April and we're going into the um, traditional Taurus time, um, you know, your energies are, I don't know, coming to a bit of a pause, coming to a slow. It's almost like, um, you know, you need to go to bed. You know that tomorrow you'll wake up in the Gemini time and you'll feel a lot better. And it's like, oh, thank goodness I had that lie in. Thank goodness I had that good sleep and hid away for a while because, you know, the Taurus period of time is that natural time when you kind of hibernate, even though it's spring <laughs> um, and, you know, it's, it's getting warmer in the Northern Hemisphere. It still feels like a time when you want to hide away a little bit and just um, take stock of where you are, who you are and what's going on. Um, so as we move into um, the Gemini season from the 20th of May, things are going to speed up a little bit for you. So not only is the sun crossing over the, um, you know, the, the, I guess your metaphorical, it's gone out of your 12th house and into your first house. Um, so it's, it's like crossing that birthing point. It's, it's, it's that, 
um, rebirth moment that you experience every time at, at this time of the year, um, it's creating a new possibility for you. So you've got that going on on the 20th of May. And then five days later, Jupiter is going into the sign of Gemini. So Jupiter is essentially moved from this sort of exciting and intuitive position in the 12th house. And then he is also crossing over this point. This is a very magical time, actually, um, as Jupiter crosses over this point. And then between May 25th and June the 3rd, Jupiter is making some phenomenal connections with different planets, including on June the 3rd, um, where it's making a trine with Pluto. Now, I'll talk about this in just a second. I do want to just quickly touch on this bit. On May the 29th, this is a date to watch out for um, a couple of days before and a couple of days after. Mars is going into a conjunction with Chiron at this point here. Um, and so... The issues that have come up for you again and again around the 19th of Feb and the 5th of March, and then at the time of the total solar eclipse on April the 8th, it's being reignited. And this time it's a lot more physically felt because Mar Mars is involved. It may well include a flash of anger, but just watch out for that. You know, so that's this is why I, I've really sort of encouraged and advocated that, you know, if you feel sore about something um, and you're not quite sure about it, but you're triggered again and again and again just work on it and and trust that you will get to the bottom of it and work out what is it you know usually underneath the trigger is a vulnerability that you know makes us feel really really scared so underneath it all I, I usually think is a misunderstanding and a fear that is playing up again so you might ask yourself what is it that I'm so afraid of is it being seen for who I am is it I'm afraid for my safety and my you know what is it that you is 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 coming up because with these chiron um things you're feeling the fear you're feeling vulnerable you're feeling open and you know what what we're saying is i'm triggered that's triggering me i don't like that you're doing this to me you're doing that to me and actually what it is is if we could admit what it is that's going on and really truly face it that's where the change is coming in so it's not you're doing this to me but it's look look i don't feel safe and actually, I don't feel safe because of this. And I'd love to talk to you about it. I feel very vulnerable opening up. Um, and yet I see that if I don't open up, it's it's all just going to be aggression between us um, and um, kind of miscommunications. Let's get to the bottom of this. So, you know, this is coming up. Now, given that you've got a Gemini rising and you've got Jupiter going through this first house and you've got this very powerful trine going on, plus a whole heap of other things that Jupiter's connecting with. This is a really fantastic time to really get clear about who you have become um, and who you are still becoming because the first house is all about your branding if, you know, your business or working for yourself, but it's also about how you look, how your body's working, everything to do with the you that is you, like like, I don't know where you consider your boundaries to be. Is it at the edge of your skin? It's a, a like, is it like a circle around you? Is it your home? You know, where do, where does you start and where does you end? It's all about you in this next month and, and pretty much for the next 11 months of Jupiter going through your sign, but, um, it, it's going to create some big changes. So if I go back to the start of this season, you know, where I said, you know, you've been producing a lot in the world and now the next big thing is to allow other people to co-create with you and that that would create, um, you know, a new way of being with other people, but it could ignite a fear of um, how comfortable are you really to be social? Where are those little fears coming up about how you exist in the world and how you work much more closely and deeply and intensely with people? So I think, you know, whatever you started at the start of this season, towards the end of the season, you're in a whole new place. You know, you've redefined yourself. And this magnificent trine between Jupiter and Pluto is really not only helping you to redefine your new boundaries, but it's also creating a much bigger boundary for yourself, um, a much greater sense of wanderlust and new potential and possibility. So there you go, Gemini Ascendant. That's my forecast. And I would like you just to stay on just for a second longer because I just want to share with you that on the day of the Astrological New Year, I'm doing um, a pop-up 
live astrological quiz. So talking about all the signs of the Zodiac with four really brilliant astrologer friends, Alexandra, Jasmina, Jim and Kimberly. Um, my husband, Carl, is hosting the show um, and it should be fast paced, fun, silly, interactive. We may be able to answer some of your questions, but come along and support us if you think this will be fun. But anyway, whether whether we see you or not on the 20th, um, I wish you a really great um, uh, next season. Um, and I hope that this forecast has been really useful to you. Lots of love. Bye for now. Hey, Cancer Ascendant, happy new astrological year to you. How are you doing? Are you feeling excited? See, these um, season changes, oops, <laughs> these season changes are actually quite interesting because you are effectively the start of a season. You know, the the cancer point, you know, the zero point energy um, that takes you into the sign of cancer is actually also equivalent to the solstice that happens every year at the time of June. So we've got these four points, these critical points. Um, this is the Aries point that represents the start of the astrological new year. We've got the Cancer point representing the solstice in June. We've got the um, September equinox representing, um, you know, the following season. And then we've got the December solstice again, marking the turning of another season. And we come round in this continuous circle. Now, each of these points carries a lot of power and energy. And I want to consider this point here, the Aries point, because as, um, as you're going from um, the sun having been in this sign of Pisces for a long time and then going into the sign of Aries, as it crosses this point, it's activating the energy of manifesting your reality. It's a very, very strong point to bring forth something new for yourself um, in a new way. Now, I say in a new way, actually, you know, every time the sun goes over this point, around about the 20th of March every year, um, this activates all of these points because if you're activating this point this point is in a square by by default this one's also in a square to it so it's also activated and this one here is in an opposition so you know all four of these corners all all of the the solstices and equinoxes are kind of represented in that one moment so the first part of this reading is to talk about how this is activating for you and then the second part is what's going on on a month by month basis throughout this season. So here's where it's at as, as far as I see it. So what are you manifesting into your reality right now? I would say from your sense of recent wonder and expansion in the world and that sense of greater possibility, that sense of wanting to learn things to a much deeper level, learning the context of things has created a different urge for you in terms of what you're producing in the world. You know, it's really giving you um, a new and renewed look at how you do business, how you are seen as um, a leader, a coach, a mentor, a guide, maybe even a parent. It's how you're taking responsibility for yourself. So you might have, um, and you might find that you go through this cycle every single time that this comes up, but, you know, in, in in the last month where you've been um, more encouraged to consider other possibilities and to expand more, you've let more into your consciousness. And now you're looking at your world and thinking, okay, well, how do I, how do I integrate this newer consciousness into my now reality? So it's like you're recreating um, and re-manifesting your career, you're re-manifesting your feeling of your reputation, your status in life. There's a re-manifestation of it. Now, because you're standing higher and taller and broader in this world, it's also having a knock-on effect in terms of your feelings. Um, and so you're feeling a lot more at the start of this new season. In fact, you may well find that your feelings are really creating manifested realities in your actual body. So for instance, if you want to change the, like you're changing your status, you may well find you've got the feelings now to change something in, in the way you're seen and change something in the way your body is working. Or you, you may also find that your emotions are activated and it's like you're wearing your heart on your sleeves. So there's also that going on. 
But because of this new and greater standing that's coming for you in the world, it's also um, affecting the way you're relating to others. You know, you may well need more of a steadying influence at home. You might, you might need something to anchor you in the world. So you may be putting a lot more responsibility on your family and your friends, the ones that keep you stable. You might also need to open up to them much more because your um, focus is definitely out there and, and very much outward facing. So you might need to pay some attention to how you're relating to those people at home. And at this time as well, you may find um, that there's a much greater urge to produce things with partners, you know, so you're not just standing in your world and becoming bigger and braver and more courageous to be a responsible person. But you might find now you're actually wanting your family and friends or your nearest and dearest to get involved. So it becomes almost like a mum and pop show or, you know, <laughs> that you and your partner start working together more closely. So it's an interesting thing that's manifesting. Now, if I break this down on a month by month level for you, and it's quite complicated because we've got things that are kicking off in the sign of Aries during the Taurus time and also things that are going off in Taurus during the actual Aries sun time. So it's a little bit confusing. I've stopped recording many times as I've been doing these forecasts. So um, hopefully I'm going to go through this one without a hitch. But anyway, this arc here is really showing you the, the course of the sun over this next season. So it enters here at zero degrees in the sign of Aries, goes through Aries, and then on the 19th of April, it crosses over the zero point Taurus. Um, and then on the 20th of May, it crosses over into Gemini, and then it brings us to the June solstice. So I'm just, oops. <laughs> There's me saying it wasn't going to, um, it was going to go without a hitch. <laughs> Famous last words. So let me just check the still recording. Yep, we are. Okay. So um, as you're coming into this Aries time from the 30th of March until the 19th of April, yes, your focus really is outward and very much tailored to what you are um, putting out there what you're showing the world. It's like you're showing the world your game face. It's like you've got your lucky underpants on, you know, but there is a few things that are going on. So on the April the 8th, we've got the total solar eclipse and that is on the point that um, Chiron is at. Now, you know, earlier this year, we've had Chiron and the North Node activating around this spot too. And so, you know, from the end of January and definitely around the 19th of February to the 5th of March, we've had this very strong, intense questioning about our value in particular for you, Cancer Ascendants. You know, what do I need to know about? What is my Achilles heel in terms of my career? Why is it that I almost don't assume responsibility? What is it that is making me insecure about being in the top position. You know, there's a lot of insecurities that have been coming up and playing out through this part of the world, uh, through this part of your life even. So you may even find that you're questioning your ability to even be um, a wage earner or uh, a homemaker or somebody who can bring home the bacon, so to speak. Sorry um, if you're vegan. Um, <laughs> it's just a turn of phrase. So it's like, are you able to make life work for yourself? You might even find that is quite a, a stressful thing. But this energy point here with um, the total solar eclipse is likely to reignite that. So get whatever tools you can in place to, um, A, be relaxed if you start to give yourself those mental problems, um, but also think of um, useful resources you've got to bolster your sense of confidence um, so that you don't listen to yourself or even let other people's opinions of you um, put you down um, if indeed that's what they're trying to do. I, I say that quite poignantly because see this blue point here, this blue point is representing when Mars makes a conjunction with Chiron. That's happening later, right at the end of May, um, towards the end of the season but it's re-triggering this point. So this point here in your chart to do with your career, to do with how important you are, what your legacy is and what your status is, et cetera, it's getting really pushed on so many times this year. Um, and you're in the last of it now, which is good. <laughs> um, and because of this, you are re-emerging um, with a greater sense of responsibility and purpose and status and 
you know, your reputation will have gone through a massive sort of 180 degree turnaround. Um, other, th other things that are happening in April, we've got the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction uh, on the 21st of April, which is happening here. And it's activating this sense of unique collaborations, a new unique perspective um, that is quite social, quite exciting. It's got a lot to do with technology, a lot to do with a philosophical understanding of the world. Um, and there's a feeling of being fired up and there's a feeling of really coming together with people. And so that's also going on in April. So you may well find that your best value and um, your gift to the world is really tied in with this. Um, OK, so, yeah, I've just mentioned the Uranus and Jupiter conjunction that's that's taking place. And, yeah, it's, it's very exciting and, and making you think much bigger in terms of people in your world and how your connections can bring you a lot greater status. Now that's happening on April the 21st. By this point, the sun has already moved into, um, the sign of Taurus. Um, now my next date that I think is, um, worth us considering is, um, May the 25th. And that's when Jupiter's moved from this point, um, to here in the sign of Gemini, which by the way, we, we go into the sign of Gemini on the 20th of May. So, from the 20th of May, things start to get really kind of exciting. And I think some of these questions from, you know, early March and April are starting to get answered. It's almost like in the, in the course of this season, where we start up is being answered and activated and worked on in some way. So what is going on then as the sun goes into Gemini, Jupiter goes into Gemini, and then finally Jupiter makes that trine to Pluto? Well, here's my best guess. So, you know, we've got this activation point between Jupiter and Uranus in the sign of Taurus, really making us feel hopeful about people. Um, and then when we sort of add it all together, you know, we started this season with this big question about our capability. We started with this great question um, in terms of, you know, the source spot about being seen as capable, being seen as good enough for the life we live, um, a, a, you know, to, very much to do with how you can focus and survive in this world. And, and so at some level, there's been this, this, this feeling that actually when you let people in, there is a greater sense that we can survive. But actually, as we're coming to the end of this season and Jupiter is moving into the 12th house, you're also being encouraged to learn that your intuition um, that that sense of you that doesn't get shared in the public domain is actually really calling you. So it's not to say you can't use this interaction with other people. And it's not to say that you're not this great big I am person in, in the um, world and in the public view. But actually, as we're ending this season, you're being brought back to yourself. You're being brought back to who you really are. You're being brought back and reminded that even though you have to make it in the world, Cancer Ascendant, you are by default an intuitive person. You are by default a watery person. You are def by default somebody who cares and has compassion and who has a lot of empathy for everybody. And so as we are in this last month from the 20th of May to the 20th of June, Jupiter is highlighting all of the compassion, all of the reasons why you have the views that you have. Jupiter is making some really lovely connections in particular. There's a, a gorgeous um, conjunction with Venus. Um, you know, there's a lot going on. And this connection here from Pluto to Jupiter, right um, at the end of this season, is really tapping into your psychic abilities, your um, feelings of connection maybe to... Um, like your lineage, um, the secrets of the past. Uh, maybe it's something that is intuitive that's come from your family. Um, it's like this, the secrets of the past are talking to you. It's like the, um, some of your experiences, um, in a very, um, kind of psychological way, um, from your family, your family inheritance and all those shared value systems is really getting enhanced and, and, and helping you to strengthen yourself. So at the end of this season, you're going into a deeply, um, sensitive, quiet, 
reclusive and thoughtful stage. And it's not wasted. It's, it's really, really useful. What I would say is during this time between the 20th of May and 20th of June, do as much journaling as you can do as much, um, self-talk as you can, because from the 20th of June, as the sun kind of re-emerges into the first house of, of your chart, you will be feeling so much more refreshed for remembering and bringing back your sensitivity. Your sensitivity is needed. It's not meant to be discounted or thrown away because your sensitivity won't make it in a big world. Actually, it's part of, it's part of the puzzle that makes you you. So don't discount that. Um, the last thing I want to share with you, and it's a, a shameless plug for something you might find fun. Um, so on the 20th of March, I'm doing um, a live stand up show um, with four astrologer friends, Alexandra, Jasmina, Jim and Kimberly. Three of them have been on my show before. Uh, Jim's new, so I'm looking forward to having him on. It's also um, going to be hosted by my Cancerian husband, Carl, um, and we're going to be exploring the signs of the Zodiac, and it's going to be very lighthearted, very silly. Um, it will have moments of insight, like it, it will birth some of those, but it should be good fun. So if you don't have anything planned for um, bringing in the astrological new year, this might be a solution. But anyway, thanks so much for listening so far. Lots of love to you, Cancerian Ascendant, and have a great season ahead. Mm -hmm. Hey there, Leo Ascendant. How are you? Happy new astrological year. So this is a forecast of two parts. So the first part is really looking at what's being activated in your chart right now around the 20th of March to um, set up, set you up for the season that you're going into. Um, and then the second part of this Ascendant um, forecast is to look at some of the things that are happening over this next season that are taking you from this point here, the Aries point, um, i.e. the March equinox, taking you through the Aries um, month, through the Taurus month and through the Gemini, leading you to the start of the Cancerian um, era <laughs> or month ahead, which um, marks the June solstice. So from March equinox to June solstice. You'll notice I'm not saying spring equinox to summer solstice because I'm aware that I do have listeners in the, in the southern hemisphere as well. And so I'm trying to include everybody as much as I can. But I'm guessing um, that it's a very different feel. I've never been in the su southern hemisphere very noticeably. I lived in Bali for um, quite a while, but, you know, I was so close to the equator that it didn't really make any difference whatsoever. So, um, <laughs> yeah, who knows what it's like to be really down under. Uh, I'm guessing loads of people do, but I, it's not in my experience. So, yeah, I can't really talk about those those activations. But anyway, let's have a look at things from your perspective, Leo Ascendant, in terms of what is going on. So the first thing I want to share with you, and this is not specific necessarily to this season ahead, but it's absolutely about what happens in your experience every time that the March equinox comes along. So every time the March equinox comes along, the sun has just been in the sign of Pisces, goes into the sign of Aries, and it goes over this point, which is a very catalyzing point. Um, and it's helping us to manifest in your reality. So, you know, what is that representing? Um, as that is changing and, and being triggered, as this point is being triggered, it's also um, going into a square. <laughs> the sun is going into a square with the cancer point that is on your chart. And it's also going into a, um, an opposition with the Libra point. And it's also going into a square with the Capricorn point. Um, now, obviously, if you've got any planets in your own birth chart on these points, and they're also going to be triggered by this, but I just want to explore this model to give you a bit more insight. So leading up to this time, you've been going through quite a psychological um, month um, leading up to this, you know, you've been thinking quite deeply, um, in particular about family patterns, in particular about family relationships, what's working, what's not working. Um, very much, you know, the eighth house is, is, um, about the judgments and value systems that we put on each other. So, you know, the second house is very much about our values. <laughs> the eighth house is also about other people's values and expectations. So, that includes things like guilt, shame, blame, anger, <laughs> resentment, and all those horrible, horrible, mucky emotions that get very difficult to understand. And so, you know, every time this year, you know, as you're coming into this March the 20th time, 
you're ready for a fresh break. You're ready for some freedom from all of that belly aching, from all of the, from all of those difficult people that you have in your life and from all of those values that other people are putting on you. You're sick to the, to your back teeth about it and you're ready for something new. You're ready for a fresh vista, for that sense of adventure, that sense of expansion, that sense of belonging to a much bigger world. Um, where there aren't any judgments or where the judgments are delivered in a different way. So you're really ready for some freedom. Um, and I imagine that, that that happens every time, you know, um, every year that this passes. Now, given that you've already got um, Chiron and the North Node playing out in this part of your chart, it's it's been extra poignant in this year so far because – any of these judgments have, that have been labelled and put on you in this last um, in this last quarter, you've been thinking, "Look, I hear your judgments, but my reality right now is that there is a big world out there, and and that there is a much bigger point." So it's almost like the more people have been moaning on you, the more freedom you've been calling to yourself. And it may have caused some pain. It might be your desire for a bit more freedom that has created so much judgment, you know, so, you know, where you've been calling for freedom and fairness and a more philosophical approach and a less personalized approach, um, you know, so people don't, you know, put nasty old blame and judgment on people, the more it's happened. And so you are absolutely ready for this new, this new break. Um, this, this, um, March equinox is representing something quite exciting for you. And because of this change, because of this expansion, the way you're feeling right now is you're actually feeling a lot more intuitive. Um, and so normally the cancer point would be, you know, urging you outwards, but it's actually urging you more internally. You know, it's, it's, it's showing you that you have to trust yourself. You have to trust your magnificence and your, um, amazing insights and intuition. You have to go inside to, to get that because actually other humans aren't really capable of really showing you what's what in the world. You have to trust yourself. And because you're finally trusting yourself and also with this open heart and wanting freedom, there is also this sense that you're creating a stronger community in the world. You know, you are birthing a new way of relating to people and you're urging other people to do that with you. So isn't that beautiful? And then because <laughs> of all of this going on, you're actually, um, you know, your urge to produce in the world, you know, your Capricorn point is actually a lot more focused on um, being very practical. So, you know, from wishing for um, a, a more free and liberated worldview and trusting your intuition um, and being able to share that in the community, you now feel much more qualified to help people navigate the real world from this new perspective. So I don't know how that fits in with you, Leo Ascendant, um, but that to me, actually, that fills me with hope, I have to say. <laughs> I kind of wish it was mine right now. Um, so let's look at the second part of this um, update then. And this is actually, I have to hold my hand up and actually put my hand on my heart here and say that this graphic has been doing my head in. Um, you know, this is the fifth go I've had of um, doing this particular graphic because, you know, I've listed all the different things that I think are happening over this um, season ahead. And some of them are in Aries taking but not activating until May, which is traditionally the Taurus time. And some of them are in Taurus, <laughs> but are activating in April, um, you know, and they're all over the place. <laughs> but there's so much stuff being activated between this um, Aries Taurus area. Um, and it's been a bit confusing for me to interpret it. So please bear with me. Um, if, if I make some little mistakes, I will hopefully correct them as well. So this arc here is to show you the transition from the sun going into the sign of Aries, taking you through these three signs, um, and ending here at the start of the, um, June solstice on the 20th of June. So this is like what is happening over the next season. So the Aries point is the first thing, and that's what I was just talking about and, and what it's activating, you know, this shift that you're going through. And then really not long after, um, you know, we've got on the eight, April the 8th, we've got um, the total solar eclipse. Now, the total solar eclipse is a very strong one because 
as as you will remember just a moment ago, I was talking about Chiron and the North Node here and what it's been activating in you. Well, you know, it, yes, it's been activating something in you, something quite deep. And on the total solar eclipse, on the day of the total solar eclipse, um, you've got the sun and the moon and Chiron there. So you've got another go of that Chiron message. Where is the pain of narrow mindedness and the, the, the pain that comes from wanting to live free and how that um, impacts other people in your life? That, that is coming up with so much more vigor and, and, and it wants to be expressed. So this is, you know, this is, this is all going on. Um, you know, as we're going through April. And then something else taking place in April is the Uranus and, and Jupiter conjunction on April the 21st. I should say here that on the 19th of April, the sun goes into the sign of Taurus. So, you know, as as we have got this Jupiter-Uranus um, conjunction taking place, we are already in this um, amazing time of... Um, you know, the Taurus manifestation. So you've come out of this place of wanderlust and you've gone into this place of manifesting your career. It feels like um, all the shifts that have gone on in March, April, you know, early April time have led you to this very, very creative, very spontaneous, very shocking time where there are big changes um, in terms of who sees you, who reacts with you, who wants to connect with you. There's lots and lots of opportunities. So I see this as being really, really deep and very, very strong. Um, and so, yeah, the, the, the Taurus time from the 19th of April to the 20th of May is a time for you to absolutely get very certain in the magic that you're putting out in the world and, and to recognize that the best way of you being a grown up and having your reputation and having your career and moving upwards and outwards is to absolutely be your true self. Absolutely unequivocally. Now from the 20th of May, right the way through to the 20th of June, we're coming into a new kind of territory. So first of all, the sun is moving into the sign of Gemini, which is signaling, um, uh, you know, a message to you that it's time to start being really in your networks, that your networks are getting stronger and stronger and stronger, and that it's time to absolutely connect and find out where you're mutually um, in agreement about things, where you're mutually working on things together and, and, and just get everything um, more connected. It's almost like a spider's web of, you know, cause it's not just a straightforward collaboration with you, <laughs> with your Leo ascendant, you know, your tendency is to be in the center of the web a bit like this chart, actually, you'll be in the center and you'll be interacting with networks all over the place, but this is a very, very strong time for you. Now, Jupiter is a few days later moving into the sign of Gemini, and then your networks are likely to just really expand exponentially, and it's going to create um, so much energy <laughs> for you. It's unreal. Um, you know, the opportunities are likely to fly in, and you may well even be called into a kind of spokesperson position, you know, because Jupiter there, you know, your persona is, is absolutely growing. Your persona within networks, your importance within networks is is absolutely going quite crazy. Um, and then a few days later, in between the 25th of May and the 3rd of June, there's a whole heap of really useful aspects between Jupiter and other planets. But on the 3rd of June, there's this very, very strong trine that I see as being absolutely helpful. It's very idealistic because it's between Gemini and Aquarius. And it's pulling in um, this, this feeling of transformation and possibility from your relationships, your personal relationships, and also your networks. It's really forging them. It's, it's making everything stronger. For a long time, I think it's felt like, you know, as you've been working um, outwards and growing, that you, your interests have taken you away from your relationships. And yet this trine is, is bringing your relationships back into your projects. So it feels like there's some some beautiful birthing going on and that the people in your life are in your life for a reason um, and, and that you're in a much stronger co-creative place. Now, one of these dates I didn't mention was the 29th of May. Um, and that's when we've got this Mars conjunction with Chiron. And it's here 
even though we're in, you know, this um, Gemini season at this point, it's absolutely here. This this conjunction between Mars and Chiron is right on this sensitive Chiron point here. So again, whatever you've been working out for yourself, you know, throughout January, February, March, April, very much about your need for freedom and the cost that it might be bringing you um, and, and why it's so important to you, that's likely to come up. And you're most likely to take some action about it. You probably want to be a little bit, um, I don't want to encourage you to be quieter because obviously, you know, Leo Ascendant, <laughs> you know, you're not meant to be quiet necessarily, but you might be a bit more mindful about other people who might be projecting onto you and how they might try to hurt or belittle or, um, yeah, almost destroy you. You know, I, 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 I'm not saying that lightly because I don't like to talk about negative things in a way that you might take that idea and create that for yourself in your life. I just would urge you just to be very, um, safe around that time. You know, you don't have to hold back necessarily, but be very aware of who your audience is at that time. Um, it's a time to watch out. I think there's going to be a lot of people getting very angry and very triggered around that time. And because you're such a freedom lover right now, um, you know, you may be targeted. So just watch out for that. Um, you know, this is, this is an interesting time. You know, you are coming into a time where your Jupiter voice, your need to be heard, your need to be understood and seen in the world is really, really strong. And let's face it, we all need a bit of joy and we all need, um, I think a bit of a, a Leo, um, rising energy sometimes, you know, um, because it's unafraid of itself. It's unafraid, you know, it doesn't want to, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's not going to run away. You know, there is this need to be clear and bright and, and, and shine your sunshine. <laughs> so anyway, I hope that's helpful to you, Leo Ascendant. One last thing before I go, um, this is a little bit of fun. I don't normally, um, plug live shows, but on the 20th of March, I'm doing a live pop-up show, um, on this channel and it's to celebrate the astrological new year. I'm joined by four very competent astrologers, Alexandra, Jasmina, and Kimberly have all been on my show before. And uh, Jim, he's joining me as well. My husband, Carl is going to host the show. He's a very good host, by the way. Um, and we're going to be exploring the Zodiac signs with some very silly questions. It's going to be fun. It's going to be spontaneous. Um, it's not scripted <laughs> and, um, and I think they're also going to be some poignant moments most likely with all of us. Um, so please do join us on this channel, um, join us in the chat room, um, and let's see what happens. But anyway, I hope you have a fantastic season ahead and I hope that this uh, forecast has been useful to you. Lots of love to you, Leo Ascendants out there. Bye for now. Hey, Virgo Ascendant, happy astrological new year for you. So yes, we are at the start of a new season um, and the Aries point, um, which is absolutely triggered as the sun goes into the sign of Aries, um, is a season changer. Um, so in this, in this season changing forecast, I'm going to talk about it in a couple of ways for you from your perspective with a Virgo ascendant. And the first part is to look at the actual zero point energy, um, positions and how they might be activated as the sun goes over this point. Um, but then to also talk about, you know, the journey of the sun during this time, you know, from going into the sign of Aries, into Taurus, into Gemini, before we come to the um, June solstice. So what is likely to happen during those times? And you'll see here, um, these are some of the biggest events that I think are, are most important to pay attention to. So let's, let's see what's coming up for you. So the first thing, and, and this is not just specific for this season, um, this um, March equinox, it's kind of true for every March equinox, though I would say it's a much stronger feeling in this March equinox. Now, why am I saying this? So every time the sun gets back to this point, it, it, it roughly equates to the 20th of March or maybe the 21st of March, zero point energy, zero degrees in the sign of Aries. Um, so around this time, it's always at this point in your chart and it's always kind of rebirthing itself. So you're manifesting your reality sort of in an eighth house feel. 
with your Virgo and ascendant um, using this whole sign system. So you're moving out of this seventh house and into the eighth house. And so um, if effectively your awareness is being taken away from your one-on-one -on -one relationships and how you're relating to people, but it's actually more focused on the value you are creating between you and your partner and you and your family. The eighth house is all about value systems. It's also about secrets and things that we don't talk about because often a lot of the values we share between people um, can get a bit mucky. Um, and I don't mean mucky in a sexy way, although the eighth house traditionally also does rule things like sex, um, lovemaking, but it also talks about the things that we don't talk about in public, you know, so birth, life and death. It's not, you know, you're opening um, like if you meet somebody at a posh do and you say, oh, how, how do you do? Hi, I'm Louisa. How are you? What you know, you don't say. So tell me about your favorite sexual position. You know, the eighth house is a place of secrecy and a bit of modesty. Um, and in that hides a lot of stuff. So this this time of year is bringing up um, slightly hidden views. It's 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 bringing up this need to move from one phase of life to another. So it's like, where are you growing right now? So I think Virgo ascendants at this point of of every year around the March equinox, you are thinking, okay, I've grown in this last year. Crikey, where am I going now? And, and like, what's my next step? Um, and you're also tackling some of those expectations that other people have put on you or you've put on other people. So it's quite possible that you've got these hidden judgments about the, the people in your life because you've just been spending a lot of time with them in the last month, you know, and so you may well have these judgments that you're putting on people and it's time to review and renew those right now. It might be a time when you get peed off with people quite a bit. Um, and you're also able to kind of understand the views that other people are putting on you. So you may well, if ever you're feeling embarrassed, shamed or guilted, you might ask yourself, well, who does this belong to? Who's putting this on me? Um, and so there's your conversation. So this is quite an intense time of the year as it, as it shows up every year for you. Now, because you're prepared to go into these no-go areas and these secret areas that are usually covered over and hidden in the attic or down in the cellar where nobody can see them, it's like as you're looking at these no-go areas, it's having a knock-on effect. So, for instance, you know, it's absolutely um, helping people or helping you anyway. Your, your feelings are urging you outwards into networks. So, for instance, you might find that um, you're noticing all these negatives and these hidden judgments and things like that are coming from your home camp. You might be noticing it's coming from within your family or from within, um, you know, like th those absolute closest to you. So your feelings might be to go a little bit further afield into the 11th house area, which is very social and it's highly networked. You might be getting support from your networks. Interestingly, the 11th house also does contain your stepchildren. And um, so if you do have stepchildren or, you know, like um, uh, one of these sort of creative families, you know, I'm part of one myself. Um, you may well find that the, the, the step energy or the, the 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 mechanism that's being put in place to sandwich families back together um, becomes more real during this time. You're feeling into it, feeling into the emotions of it. Now, because you know, it, it's almost like there is this opening up of hidden feelings. It's also opening you up to understand that you know where are your values? You know, the, the Libra point you're urged to relate is actually you're now urged to relate to yourself in a different way. You know, this house here is how do you earn money and how do you feel resourced, but you can't feel resourced if you don't see the value in who you are. And so all of this inquiry is giving you a new way of seeing yourself. And then, um, because of the new way you're seeing yourself, you're now urged to be a lot more creative. So it's almost like, you have seen the better value in you. And from that, you're able to be creative because I don't think creativity comes from somebody who doesn't feel they've got anything to offer. You know, creative creativity comes from somebody who's feeling quite hopeful from themselves. You know, they start to feel inspired, you know, things arise within them. So this is the mindset that is triggered at this time of year for you. Now, um, 
in terms of it in, on a month by month, I, I've made the mistake going through this, this set of forecasts because, um, you know, I see that it's on a month by month basis, but it's also on a sign by sign basis. And some of these different, um, things that are happening, like the Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus, um, is actually happening, um, right at the start of Taurus. Um, but it's in April and I've got really confused as I've been talking through this with the other signs. So please do bear with me. This is one of my more complicated explanations, but I hope you'll still find some value in it if I do get a bit mixed up here and there. Um, so anyway, you know, this is, um, reflecting the fact that, you know, the sun goes into the sign of Aries on the 20th of March and between then and the 19th of April, um, we've actually got two eclipses. We've got one on the 25th of March. I haven't actually included it on this list because I am actually doing um, an eclipse special um, as a separate video. So watch out for that if you want to know more about that and how that's impacting you. But I have put in the total solar eclipse um, on the 8th, which is also taking part uh, or taking, yeah, it's, 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 um, it's taking place um, in this time of the Aries. It's like the Aries month, we could call it. So the total solar eclipse, why did I put that in? Well, it's in a conjunction with Chiron. And, you know, um, one thing that I didn't say is, you know, we've had Chiron or you've got Chiron and you've had the North Node going through this part of your chart for some time. But in February and March, they were absolutely together in a conjunction that really doesn't happen that often. And so this total solar eclipse, i.e. a new moon, but an eclipsed new moon, um, is exactly in a conjunction with Chiron um, at this place. And so it's it's bringing up any of those feelings that I was talking about earlier in terms of the shared values, you know, where you've been judging other people and kind of come to an impasse. And also where you felt totally judged and threatened by what other people are putting on you. So this total solar eclipse is a bit of a firecracker, I have to say. So this you know, this, this first part of your season, Virgo Ascendant, I think is really charged with a lot of energy to do with he said, she said, <laughs> and how you can grow through that, which I, I advise you do, you know, anywhere where you're getting caught up in the minutia of who's right, who's wrong, who's to blame, who's not, um, you're, you're taking yourself off your path. You're taking yourself away from your own divinity, um, and so what I would say is, do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? Because that's the, that's, you know, probably what these eclipses are going to be bringing up for you in quite a sore way. Um, now things will start to change. And I like this, you know, from the 19th of April, um, to the 20th of May, we're really in this Taurus time. The sun is coming through here and it's making you feel a lot more expanded and on the 21st of April, we've got the Uranus-Jupiter conjunction um, in your ninth house, fully in view, fully in its power. And it's really showing you what can happen when you do get into that divine space. You know, when you step out of the, out of the he said, she said, and or they said even, <laughs> let's make this inclusive. But, um, you know, as, as the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction comes up and you're fully in this lovely Taurus space, you're just feeling so divine and so expanded that you realize that actually we're all humans, we're all doing our thing here. And, you know, opinions are a little bit like um, buttholes. You know, we've all got one. And yet there's so much more to being human than having an opinion. You know, we we are all here. We're all brothers and sisters. And so there's this feeling of connection that is really, really strong. And you'll find that you're like a sponge at this time. You're really learning loads of things. Lots of things are coming up in your consciousness. You might even be kind of channeling. There's, there's so much going on. And it's, it's a great time to escape as well, you know, a great time to um, have yourself a nice holiday. Then um, around the 20th of May, we're going into the Gemini time. I'm going to call this the Gemini month. Of course, it's not a full month, you know, like um, it's going from the 20th of May to the 20th of June. So it's it's 
the same length of time as a month, but um, you know, it's not going from the same dates. But let's let's call this the Gemini month, okay? From the 20th of May to the 20th of June. Now, this is marking an interesting time. This is where these three are coming in. So I see things are quite like tight at the beginning, then they get really interesting. And then we get this sort of intensity, this rapid release of energy. So the sun comes into Gemini, it's in your 10th house, it's exciting, you're feeling a status, there is this call to be seen and to be heard. And um, your reputation is um, uh, like, it's, it's almost like you're on full view suddenly. And this happens at this time of the year, every year for you. Now we've got Jupiter coming into this position, um, right at the top of your 10th house. Now that's seen as quite a fortuitous thing. Now, um, you know, Jupiter in the 10th is like creating the environment of expansion. So if you do want to expand and you've already put a bit, bit of work in behind it, the chances are, you know, things are going to expand. And, and you know, I'm very excited for you from that perspective. Um, you'll probably find there's a lot more communications. There's a lot more interest in what you do and how you are. Um, and one thing I would say, um, just because Jupiter expands a bit too far and can sometimes be a bit pig headed, I would just, you know, in your expansion and your delight, um, watch out for any additional pride that comes up at that time. Cause you know, Jupiter, you know, is very much the planet of pride comes before a fall. You know, this is about your expansion, but Jupiter is also quite inflaming. So if you, if you kind of come out of that divine space that I spoke about and go into more of a nitty gritty space, you may well feel, you may well find that Jupiter actually leads you to trip yourself up. So stay as divine as you can because Jupiter is a planet that is more about divinity and religion and, and belief systems um, and doing the right moral thing, you know, uh, without actually, um, you know, taking it too far and getting to the moralizing stage, which that's Jupiter when he is the private comes before a fall type of thing. So anyway, you know, this is going to really put you in the public eye. So again, that's another reason if you don't want to, if you're not sure about being heard, saying all the things you're saying, um, just be aware that during this time you are highly visible now. Um, so it's, it's, it's a thing that's going to bring a lot of energy to your career and you, you need to just um, be prepared to be seen and just consider what it might be if you were seen for the wrong things, if that makes sense. Um, and kind of to highlight that, um, a few days later, Mars is in a conjunction with Chiron. Now it's right over here, this point about judgments and you being in judgment and other people being in judgment of you. And Mars is, you know, is quite physical. Um, so you may well find this attacks or you're feeling attacked, or you're feeling like you want to attack people. So there is this very strong need to defend and 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 also to to um, be defensive. So um, this is why, you know, right at the start of this reading, I, I suggested whatever is going on here about judgments, judging others, and being able to release yourself from that. That's I think it's so beneficial for you to be able to do that as soon as you can, because when you come up here, the whole world's going to be listening. Uh, you know, apart from, you know, you might be censored if you're not saying the things that the world wants you to hear. Um, so yeah, um, this, this, this time of May, it is rapidly advancing you. And yet it's also, um, creating a sense of a free son of danger. Um, and that may be something that you can live with and work with, and it may be part of what you do. You know, it might be that in your career, you're about to make some big changes, or if you're managing a lot of people that you might need to let some people go. Um, I don't know. Um, it, this may well fit in in a very relevant way. Beyond this Mars conjunction to Chiron, there's this lovely set of um, aspects happening, but in particular, there's this Jupiter trine Pluto, which is a big one. It doesn't happen that often. Um, when it does happen, it creates positive transformation and quick transformation. And the, and the opportunity for us to stabilize the transformation, I think, is, is really, really big. Um, and it's very much about ideals. It's very idealistic with this air sign. It's very much, um, you know, in the realm of mentality and thoughts and beliefs. Um, although beliefs, I think, are like thoughts. And, it's like air and water mixed together. It's, you know, it's like our... Um, 
uh, something that comes from our guts. But I, this is a very heady space. Um, this could actually, you know, this this trine here could actually create some really useful changes in 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 your career that that actually impact your day-to-day -day work. So I actually see your career and your working coming together in a really helpful way. Um, like you can't do one without the other. You need the stability of your um, helpful habits and routines to be able to be this powerhouse at the top that you are. So as you're coming to the end of this um, season from start to finish, you've gone through quite the transformation from somebody really concerned about being judged and judging others to freeing yourself and to finding yourself in a much more divine space, much more of a space of actually, you know, I will stand for what I stand for and I can find ways to do it that include everyone, not just people I want to hear from, but even the people I don't want to hear from. Because otherwise, what's the point? It's not, it's not a discussion. It's not, um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it, <laughs> there is something very deep that you're learning right now. Um, and the chances are you're going to have, um, you know, um, a, a much deeper understanding of how it's playing in your life. But, um, yeah, this, this is quite the journey you're on from judgments to the freedom of judgments and then being able to stand strong and communicate from a really pure and beautiful place. So I think that's a pretty good, um, uh, transformation you're going on right now, Virgo Ascendant. Last thing I want to share with you, I don't normally do a plug for um, my live shows because I don't do them that often, but I am doing a live show on the 20th of March and it's going to be fun. It's a fun international, uh, international, actually it is international because we've got two astrologers from America. We've got one in the UK, um, one in Canada. I'm in Portugal. And then my husband is the host um, and he is not an astrologer, but he's a very good host and he's a um, also in Portugal with me. Um, and we're going to be looking at the signs of the Zodiac. It's going to be fun and silly. It's not going to be highbrow, but that's not to say it's without value. It should um, be very humorous and I think quite insightful too. So if that sounds like the way you might want to bring in the new season, then please do join us on the 20th of March. But anyway, have a fantastic month ahead, Virgo Ascendant. Lots and lots of love to you on your journey because it's quite an intense one and I think potentially really magnificent. But anyway, lots of love and hopefully connect with you soon. Bye for now. So um, Libra Ascendant, let's have a look at what's playing out for you in this season ahead. So uh, this is an interesting one because, you know, this, this season change um, starts with the sun going into the sign of Aries. Um, and I always think that people with Libra Ascendant, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's strange because <laughs> like Aries is traditionally the ruler of the first house and, um, you know, Libra is traditionally the ruler of the seventh. So Librans are very much about partnership, whereas Aries are very much about, um, being independent. And yet, um, you know, this, this, um, March equinox, is starting off in your seventh house. Your astrological new year always starts off in this place of other people. And yet it starts with this Aries point. It's, it's kind of funny. And I'm guessing if you've got your Libra and Ascendant, you know exactly what I'm talking about with that, that difference. Because even when you are wanting to be yourself, it's still in partnership. <laughs> so, um, right. This Aries point. Every time the sun goes over this Aries point, like zero degrees in the sign of Aries, it happens around the 20th to the 21st of March, according to the year we're in. And it, it sets off a whole heap of um, change. It's, it's like an activating point in your charts and it's helping you to manifest your reality. But where is it helping you manifest your reality? So it's creating something in terms of your partnerships and also how to relate to partners who are very independent and how to find independence within your partnerships. So it's, it's a question that comes up for you every time we go through this. Now, in particular with this year, I would say it's more poignant now than ever because um, in February, we had a conjunction between Chiron and the North Node um, and that was really going until the, you know, the end of the first week in March. 
you know, so this this has been quite a, a long drawn out conjunction that has really brought up the energies of um, the sort of painful learning that you might have with relationships and the Achilles heel that a relationship might be for you and also how it fits into your karmic pattern, how it fits into your life direction and your sense of destiny. So it's been a, it's, it's kind of been a bit of a sore spot. And you might have found that your partners have been um, the instigators of some of the pain that you felt. You know, it's felt very much like they've almost gone out to hurt you at times. So it's it's been it's been quite raw, um, suffice to say. But with this um, with this Aries point, this is the first time that these two have been together in in the seventh house. Um, since Chiron has um, been in this house. So this is a very poignant one. So before this um, season shift, you know, the lessons of what you're learning in terms of relationships have been really, really playing out. And it's almost like the sound of uh, it's the vibration of the change that you're going through is so strong that you can almost hear it now. Um, so there's been echoes of it in the past, but it's, it's come, kind of got to fever pitch where you've realized that either you've had to change in relation to how your relationships are, uh, how you conduct your relationships. Um, yeah. And, and that your partners need to accept you the way you are as well. So it's a, a great big acceptance fest, but it's not easy because often we see our partners, um, you know, we, we put the things that we can't see on our, in our own psyche onto our partners. So, so it's, it's a very interesting and psychological time for you. So as this is being activated, um, and you're creating this new sense of relationships with those around you. It's also creating a new vibration for you in the world, you know, so your feelings, maybe you're feeling more independent or more strong um, in your independence, more comfortable in your independence. And so that's helping you to actually be more intuitive in the way you're doing your work and in the way you're standing up. In, in the world. It's almost like you're coming from an intuitive and independent space and all of a sudden you're more visible. Um, and because of that, um, your urge to relate is, is absolutely based on what feels right to you. So, you know, in other times you, you like with the, with the Libra ascendant, there is this desire to be able to relate to everyone because we're all the same and to find the similarities, but actually you might be more able to relate to people because of their differences. You might be able to, um, absolutely, um, be okay with being different and, and really love it. In fact, because it allows you to completely be yourself in your relationships and because of this, <laughs> it's also um, giving you the urge to um, create a new kind of family or a new kind of relatedness. It's actually helping you feel stronger, you know, because of this new understanding that you can really be yourself and you can really allow your partner to be themselves. It's actually creating that sense of, yeah, we're both happy. So now we actually maybe want to create a family or we want to create a home together, you know, so it, it as I'm seeing this, I actually think your life and your relationships are starting to come into some reason and, and some kind of understanding that's really, really helpful. I don't see this as a bad time at all. I see this actually being really, really helpful. Now, as we move on to this next part of the forecast, I'm looking at how this is broken down on an astrological month by month basis, not a full month. It, it, I'm going from the 20th of March to the 19th of April. So that's the Aries month, let's call it. And then we've got the 19th of April to the 20th of May, which is like our Taurus month. And then we've got the 20th of May to the 20th of June, taking us up to the summer solstice or the June solstice. Uh, sorry to those in the Southern hemisphere. Um, Cause that's your winter solstice, isn't it? <laughs> so what is happening during this time? Well, here are the, the main things I think are happening over our season that I want to really pull your attention to. So the first one is the Aries point. That's the, that's the March equinox. And that's our starting position. So it's, it's that new way of relating this, this feeling like you're manifesting a new way of doing relationships that is going to transform your whole reality. That's, that's the occurrence that's going on. 
And within a few weeks, we've actually got um, the penumbral lunar eclipse. I didn't put it on there. And we've got the total solar eclipse going on during this um, Aries month ahead. Now, I am doing a separate video about the two eclipses, the eclipse season. And you'll see that um, this is going to be released first and that's going to be hot on its heels. But this particular eclipse that I've mentioned, the total solar eclipse, is happening in an exact conjunction with Chiron, which is the thing I was talking about, the Chiron North Node conjunction showing you whether there's been pain about relating to others and the pain in um, maybe what your independent partners put on you that feels painful, I don't know. But whatever that pain is relating to, it's kind of coming up for you know, there's there's a new way of thinking about it. And this total solar eclipse could clear it, could give you a clearing understanding, or it might just give you a nudge that there's some more dirt there that needs to come up and out. But essentially, um, it could be a bit painful, but it could be also really dynamic and, and allow a very great change to occur. So the two eclipses going, you know, on in this Aries month, is is huge you know it is really changing it's 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 almost like it's cleansing the deepest levels of your relationship so that you can re-emerge refreshed and really open for something new now from the 19th of april when the sun goes into the sign of taurus um, and a couple of days later we've got the um jupiter uranus conjunction in the sign of taurus there is this feeling of um i guess liberation um, and also um, a, real, a realization that it doesn't matter how free you are, there's still more to go <laughs> in terms of relationships. Not to say that um, you're in a bad place, but in this place of openness, it might be that you can change the way you're relating to each other in terms of languaging and stuff like that. So, you know, you're committed to each other, but now comes implementing it. You know, the eighth house has a lot of blame, shame, guilt, and anger. It has a lot of judgment words. It has a lot of um, um, unexposed bigotry between people. And a lot of it is what we grow up with in our families. And we just accept, we just think, oh, that's the family narrative. We never really sit. We might feel a bit uncomfortable about it. We don't always put our finger on it. So this Jupiter Uranus conjunction at one level could blow apart the whole family narrative or the whole narrative of what accepted behaviors are in your world and give you a whole new perspective. Um, and that could be really good. Now, the eighth house also is showing where we're going through a life change, you know, where we're going from one stage of life to another. So again, that could be um, the start of you accepting that maybe uh, you're not as young as you were, or, you know, you're like coming out of your thirties into your forties. You know, there is a, a subtle um, reminder that things are growing and expanding, but your consciousness is expanding as well. Now, there's another one that's, that could also come up during this time. That one is money and shared assets, because obviously we're talking about relationships. And so Jupiter and Uranus in the conjunction here could really show a windfall, you know, like maybe you and your partners have got some form of investment together, or, you know, there's, there's something to expand upon here. Could be all three. Um, and all three could actually work quite well together. Um, as we're moving on into the, let's say the Gemini month from the 20th of May to the 20th of June, what I would, um, just, focus you on is yeah so the sun comes into this area and it's a feeling of relief so it feels like these other two months have been quite intense and then the third month of this season there is some noticeable relief and it starts to lighten up quite quickly so first things first you know the sun's here um and then we've got a whole heap of aspects between um jupiter and other planets that are creating a lightening and a feeling of joy and a feeling of movement and optimism. Jupiter has essentially moved from here to here in the space of a month. He's really got a wriggle on. <laughs> it's, it's quite a lot of um, movement. So Jupiter comes into Gemini and at that moment, there is this feeling of expansion. Jupiter is very happy in the ninth house. Um, and the ninth house is a house that's quite comfortable for you in terms of, you know, your Libra and Ascendant. It's a time of feeling really expanded. It's a time of feeling like you're ready for an adventure, a big adventure, something really bigger than you've ever thought of. You know, it's it's the wildness. It's wanting to bring more of the world into your life. It's it's really big. Um, I love it. Um, it's, 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 it's the chance to 
um, almost leave behind your old constructs and embrace this new sense of learning, the new sense of religion or spirituality, maybe even a new political perspective. Um, loads of things are opening up for you. Um, and you almost want to dive right into them and explore them and experience them. So it's very experiential um, and also very contextual. You know, it's not just like reading facts and like analyzing them, but it's there's a lot of, okay, well, I heard that, but let's experience this. Let's see what's really true. Um, and then we've got this beautiful trine between Jupiter and Pluto, which is really idealistic. It's, you know, creative it's got this creative transformation and this um abundant and excitable expansion you know it's almost like the more you create the more you expand the more you expand the more you create um so i just see that you know as we start this um this season on the 20th of March, actually where it leaves you is with a completely fresh and clean slate and this sense of optimism and excitement. So I see it all good. Now, there is one date that I didn't mention. Uh, it's the Mars conjunction to Chiron on the May on May the 29th. It's happening here. So see this, this is uh, the total eclipse spot. It's also the spot that we had the um, North Node and um, Chiron conjunction. So just be aware that any leftover residual energies about your relationships that you've not quite got a handle on, you know, this is another sort of triggering date. And and maybe mark it in your in your diary if you, if you think it's quite important. Maybe a few days before and a few days after, um, because it's likely that things will come up in quite a physical and visceral way. So you might want to think about, um, you know, how you might navigate any no-go areas that come up because, you know, it's happening at an expanded time. It might be that these no-go areas come up and you've got the wherewithal to have a really open discussion about it and to have a sense of freedom. Who knows? But anyway, I hope that's helpful for you. Before you go, I'm going to do a shameless plug for a great live pop-up show, which I think is going to be great fun. So on the day of the um, March equinox, I've invited four of my astrologer pals. He's a pal to be. This is Jim. Jim, he's not been on my show before, but I have had Kimberly, Jasmina and Alexandra on my show. Uh, my husband's going to host it. He's going to be our quiz master. And we're going to have um, a Zodiac quiz to, I guess, celebrate the start of the astrological new year. Should be really fun, lighthearted, probably quite irreverent. Um, and I think there will be moments of outbreaks of insight and um, kindness and caring as well as a kind of a wicked sense of humor. But if you, if you don't have anything booked on that day and you think it'd be fun, then please do join us in the chat room, send your questions and we'll see if we can answer them as well. So anyway, um, thank you so much, um, for listening this far. I hope you have a great season ahead and hope to connect with you real soon. Lots of love to you. Bye for now. And we're on to Scorpio, Scorpio Ascendant. Happy new astrological year. How are you doing? So um, this is um, a reading in two parts. So um, the first part of the forecast, I'm really showing how the um, Aries point energy or the um, equinox energy is really manifesting and activating in your chart at the time of the new season change. <clears throat> now, this is something that happens every year around the same time, uh, you know, between the 20th to the 21st of March, um, you know, without fail, the sun will be going through this part of your chart. So I'm going to explain that for you. Um, I'm also going to be um, looking at the um, the season ahead on a month by month basis. And by month by month, I'm actually kind of referring to the astrological month. So <laughs> from the 20th of March to the 19th of April, the 19th of April to the 20th of May and the 20th of May to the 20th of June, which takes us into our next season. So yeah, I'm curious to see how this um, is going to work out for you. Um, also, because I've got Scorpio Ascendant myself. <laughs> Um, and I've also included some of the big, the big parts of what I see happening in this next season. So, um, let's get going. So the first thing that I think in terms of what you're activating in your chart, um, <clears throat> this Aries point, 
of zero degrees in the sign of Aries is absolutely about manifesting a new a new reality for yourself. And this new reality is birthed out of that place of imagination and that place of creativity. So the sun has just very recently been going through the sign of Pisces, which is very much um, associated with what you're birthing, um, your children, your pets, your uh, creativity, your good times, sensuality, flirting, relationships, uh, like new relationships. Um, it's a fun and frivolous place, but I always think of it as a place of creativity. It's a place of joy. So, you know, this Aries point happens after you've been delving into your joy. And from that place of joy, it's coming into this place of sixth house, which is the sixth house energy is about how you are running your life. Like, um, it's very much, um, almost like the built version of, of your life. I always think the sixth house and 12th house is obviously these are all in polarity to each other. Um, in the same way as the sixth house is showing how you're building your life in terms of your habits, your routines, um, how you manage your finances, your health, your diet, your house, your home, your family, um, the 12th house is really showing how you're de-manifesting, how everything is dissolving. So this is quite a creative, it's creative, not in the woo kind of sort of anything goes kind of way, but it's how you're putting your creativity into order, how you're making it fit for purpose. And so this Aries point energy, as you go into, or as we go into the sign of Aries, it's always triggering this moment in time of you getting all your ducks in a row, checking that everything's fit for purpose, everything is working right, making corrections and alterations in terms of how you have your life set up so that it's, it, it flows smoothly. Now, the great thing with the Aries point is as it's activated, it automatically, um, um, does something to the Cancer point, the Libra point, and also the Capricorn point. All of these are the zero degrees of the cardinal signs representing the June solstice, the September equinox, and the December solstice. So, you know, it's um, a big wheel, a big activation wheel. So on the 20th of March, not only are you going into that regular phase of getting all of everything, well, everything in alignment to who you are and how it's all working, but it's also um, kind of giving you the freedom. So your your new feelings about having things come together in some kind of order is creating a sense of freedom. It's it's giving you a greater sense to explore because you know your foundations are quite well set up, and you've got the opportunity to recreate your world um, and and your visions, your views, your ideas, your philosophies on life in a new way. And because of this activation going on here, um, you're now also um, also working on the inner world. you know so your urge to relate, is actually more you're relating to yourself. It's 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 like you're creating a stronger life for yourself. You're seeing life through um, a more expanded lens. You're then understanding how that feels. You're relating it to your own experience. And then from that, you're able to give back into your community. It feels like um, you're on this process of making yourself fit for purpose so that you can bring that into your community and share that there. So I see this as being um, very much about creating a better health. And I'm not talking about your physical or mental health necessarily, but it's like getting everything into a healthy alignment. Um, and then the the shared perspective that comes from that is leading on to your local community and also the world community. Um, so I like this. I like this um, this space that you're inhabiting right now. Now, in terms of breaking it down over the actual next season, you know, the Aries point is here representing um, the 20th of March, right the way through to the 19th of April. This is our time when all the Aries business is going on. Now, I didn't put in the penumbral lunar eclipse, which is happening on the 25th of March, um, mainly because I'm also about to release um, uh, an eclipse season video. However, <laughs> the total solar eclipse um, was so big that I, I couldn't feasibly 
um, leave it off this list. You know, the total solar eclipse is one of the biggest dates of this whole entire year. Um, now, I just want to take your mind back a step. Let's just go back. So, you know, you've we've all ha like anyone uh, like uh, right now everybody has chiron in aries somewhere you know like chiron um is traveling through aries and that will be showing up and it impacting your chart in some way and the north node is also there now chiron's been in in aries um i think it started in 2017 and then transitioned in permanently or you know for this duration i think in 2018 it's off the top of my head i might be wrong correct me in the comments if i am <laughs> um and um and this is the first time during that time that the North Node has been really going through the sign of Aries. So it went into the sign of Aries last year. So this is the first time the North Node and Chiron have got together in a really, really long time in this part of your chart. And, and it's bringing up sort of insecurities about the way we're living. Uh, for you with your Scorpio Ascendant, it's bringing up um, insecurities, a new awareness about how the modern lifestyle works for you, how health and, and fitness come together, how you're managing your money, all of these things about building a solid base. And then the necessity to, is it worth doing, for instance? These are all subjects that are possibly causing you a bit of a pain point, I have to say. So it's interesting that the time of the um, total solar eclipse on the 8th of April, it's right on this spot or very, very close to the spot of the North Node and Chiron conjunction from February to March. So, you know, the total solar eclipse, it's giving you a really good blast off point. You know, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a new moon and it's an eclipse, new moon. So it's very powerful for new starts and it's exactly in a conjunction with Chiron. So it's absolutely working at a fundamental level on all those things that you've been insecure about and pained about in this part of your chart. So this really may well get your life back in order or remind you about where you haven't quite got there. But you know, there's always an, another opportunity to go back and redo it and redo it and redo it. For instance, and this is later on, you know, when we are in this last part of the season, um, in the Gemini time, we've actually got Mars in a conjunction to Chiron, which is here. Um, now, this, you know, on the 29th of, of um, May, that's going to reappear. So what I would say absolutely at the start of this season, Scorpio Ascendant, that whatever is triggering you about the way you're living your life, try and get it under control and try and understand it. Spend some time analyzing it, examining it, really working with it, because whatever you leave un, unexpressed, um, un, unresolved, unfit for purpose, it's coming back but this time with Mars, Mars and Chiron in a conjunction is not a very sort of painful, it's not a, a painless situation. It's quite difficult. You know, Mars in a conjunction to Chiron could be really creating a physical reaction to our pain. And of course, this is an area of our health. You know, we don't want a physical reaction necessarily unless it's giving us the strength and impetus to make an absolute concerted effort to make big change. So I would be cautious. I say, the sooner we resolve these problems and issues that we're aware of, the sooner we can work with the benefits of this energy. But if you leave it all and think, ah, oh, manana, manana, let's like leave it tomorrow, um, it will come and bite you in the butt. So that's just my little caveat there. That's that's what I would recommend. Anything to do with Chiron right now has just got some real epic themes, um, but it's our opportunity to clean our space. It's cleaning our life. It's cleaning us of anything we're holding on to that is not working for us. So I absolutely um, advocate getting that sense of a clean bill. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's April. You know, it's eclipsy, it's strong, it's direct, and it's getting your life in order. As we move into the, from the 19th of April to the 20th of May, we're fully in our Taurus season, which has our, our attention very much focused on the people in our life. And on the 21st of um, April, we've got that long awaited Uranus and Jupiter conjunction. 
Now, this is really opening up space. Our, ex our relationships are likely to get quite exciting at that time. We may well find that our partners are bringing in something quite exciting at that time. God knows what they're bringing in. <laughs> um, you know, if you're single, this is, is quite an opening opportunity for you. Um, you know, suffice to say, the people in your life are surprising you, hopefully delighting you along the way. I would say what we need to be is absolutely relaxed and open. You know, the more open we are with our, par uh, our parents, our partners and our friendships and the people we have in our lives, the less likely we are to be rocked by their sudden need for expansion and independence. You know, this is really describing how our partners are. You know, they are expanding. They are independent. They are unusual. They are being their freaky selves for sure. Um, and that's all okay. And yet, if we are holding a vision of them that they are not matching, um, it's going to create um, dis-ease and distrust between us and our partners. The very best thing we can do is recognize that what they're looking for in terms of greater freedom to define themselves and, and a greater space to be themselves, you know, why, why are we having difficulty with that? Is it because we're not allowing that for ourselves? You know, it's time to, whatever we're giving or needing to give to others, we need to give to ourselves. So I see that um, this Taurus time could be a real breakthrough for us. Um, you know, and offer us um, a much grander life. Now, here's where it gets even more exciting because from the 20th of May, we're heading into the Gemini time. And so the sun's going to go into Gemini. Um, and then on the 25th of May, um, Jupiter comes from here to there. So he goes very quickly in this last part of um, April. Um, and into May, you know, he, he, he whizzes into the sign of Gemini. Um, and then between the 25th of May and the 3rd of June, we have a whole heap of really great aspects between Jupiter and other planets. Um, and, you know, things are fantastically expanded and it's expanding into our eighth house, which, you know, the eighth house is a place of other people's money um, and shared assets. It's also a place of other people's BS so all those expectations and values that they're putting on us that we either accept as part of our narrative or we say, now, hang on a second. I think you need to look at yourself. Um, you know, it's that place that's kind of tricky to understand. The eighth house is, um, you know, where we are um, interacting with the mysteries of life, the birth, life, death cycle, the... Um, rites of passage that we go through as we transform ourselves in life. It's, it's a huge change. You know, are we gracefully moving into our next stage of life? Are we letting go of what we don't need to hold on to? How are we creating more with our, with our partners? And is there a, an opportunity for shared income? So Jupiter coming into this could be quite useful because, you know, Jupiter going through the eighth can create a lot more income for you from other areas of life. You know, it, it's profiting you, but it can also bring a lot more opinion from the people in your lives, a lot more judgment, a lot more inflammation. Um, suffice to say, the um, trickier secret aspects of our relationships, in particular, our family relationships, our family history is coming to town. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's speeding up. Now, what I do find kind of interesting is that there's this lovely um, Jupiter and Pluto trine. Now, as that comes into its um, actualization, as it comes into being, it's creating a lot of stability for us at home. So it's working on our idealism on how we live our life and also how we finance our life and how we work through these secrets. It's really bringing a lot of light in to all the darkness that we might be holding in terms of how we're living and the secrets of why we're living in this particular way. Is it guilt, shame, blame and anger that are keeping us in these resentful patterns? So I do see that there's a very strong transformation point. What I love about this in total is that from the start of um, the Aries time, right the way through to the start of the next season, we are transforming, you know, so this idea of getting our life in balance and getting our life fit for purpose gets tested in how we are relating to others. And then finally, as we're ending this time and heading into the um, June solstice, you know, the feeling is, is that we are expanding with our nearest and dearest and it's 
taking us into an uncharted territory, as yet uncharted territory, and yet there's a lot of riches and potentials there. So watch this space. I hope that's helpful for you. Now, for those of you that like a bit of live entertainment, um, especially astrological entertainment, and also if you want a bit of a laugh, um, you know, if you're not one of these serious astrology types, you know, I do try and keep things a bit lighthearted. Um, I think sometimes we need to laugh at ourselves a little bit. So on the 20th of March, to celebrate the Astrological New Year, I'm hosting a live show with four astrological pals. Well, these three have been on my show before. You might have seen them, Alexandra, Jasmina, and Kimberly. Jim's a new friend, so I don't really know him, but I do know he's a double Gemini, <laughs> as is Jasmina. Oh, my God, I'm completely, um, you know, outvoted. Oh, and, and Alexandra's got Gemini Moon as well. So... Who knows where this is going to go, but this is going to be a fast, um, lively, interactive um, astrology quiz. We will probably take the mickey out of um, the signs and some of the stereotypes, but there will be some moments of reflection and deep insight as well. So if you want to join us in the chat room, please do. My beautiful husband, Carl, <laughs> a Cancerian, is going to be um, hosting this. He's a very experienced host. So um I think this is going to be good. So if you have um, a space in your diary and you fancy a bit of fun to celebrate the Astrological New Year, then please do join us on the 20th of March and look forward to seeing you there. But anyway, have a fantastic uh, spring or autumn, according to which hemisphere you're in. Um, I hope this forecast has been very useful to you. Lots of love to you, Scorpio Ascendant. Bye for now. Mm. Okay, so Sagittarius Ascendant, how are you doing? Happy Astrological New Year, because this is what it's all about. So um, earlier in the show, I was talking about, um, you know, going into the sign of Aries, um, a little bit about what it represents and a little bit about the Aries point, um, which is astrologically the start of our um, our New Year, our Astrological New Year. It's the start of the Zodiac. Um, if you um, are content with the Western version of astrology. But anyway, um, the points, the zero points between um, Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn, you know, these are very four very poignant, strong, and powerful manifesting points. So the first part of this forecast, I'm looking at how these are manifesting um, and, and kind of throwing you into this new season, like what is occurring to you? Um, you know, how is this occurring to you is, is the big question. And then as we continue with this, I'm going to touch on um, th these parts of the chart, which I think are kind of interesting. So the actual start of the um, equinox and the new season, the total solar eclipse, Jupiter and Uranus conjunction, Jupiter going into Gemini, uh, Mars conjunct Chiron, <laughs> yikes, and Jupiter trine Pluto. So really covering um, the three months forming this season. Um, and I'm going to call them astrological months rather than the actual um, calendar months, because I tried with the calendar months earlier in this video. And for the first five or six <laughs> forecasts, I got myself in such a pickle. I really did. So <laughs> I'm giving up on that one now. But anyway, let's start your um, forecast now. So what occurs to me? So the Aries point is um, is is literally a point that comes around every single year. You know, as the sun goes over this Aries point around the 20th, 21st of March, um, it's triggering something in your chart that is triggering probably in a similar way every year. Um, now, because we've had Chiron going through this part of your chart since 2017, 2018, um, it's been there a long time. We've now also got Aries um, North Node um, that has been coming in this way. Um, now, this is this is a really, really strong conjunction between Aries and um, the Aries North Node and Chiron. And so as we're going into this new season, there's a very, very strong theme of it. You know, these two have been in conjunction since, you know, coming into conjunction before February, then they were in conjunction from February the 19th to 5th of March, um, according to whether you're using the true or mean node. <laughs> and then they're just coming out of their conjunction now. But the theme of Chiron North Node has been really, really strong here. It's all to do with birthing, reproduction, um, very much to do with your creative, your creative outlets, your children, your um, sexual, sensual presence, um, romantic endeavors, 
like new relationships and things like that. Everything that is coming from your desire for joy and to experience joy and to create joy. You know, the fifth house is a joy fest place. <laughs> so, um, you know, as you've come into the, you know, the time to go into the um, new season, your attentions have been very much in the home, very much in the family, very much in the mundane, and you've still been kind of hidden away. You know, you've been at home, you've been kind of trying to sort things out at home, trying to tidy up things. Things have probably got a bit creative and a little bit chaotic. And so you, it's time for you to sort of come out of the home. It's time for you to come out and and from your like sense of self, from your sense of stability, from your home comes the creativity. I guess the more organized you are at home, the more upfront you are with it, the easier it is for you to be very creative and, and to get this birthing. But essentially you're at this birthing point where you're working out how to manifest your reality in joy. Yeah, how can you experience more joy is the big question. Um, now, from this, you know, because if we're ex in noticing this point, then there are also the other zero point cardinal points, you know, so the June solstice, the September equinox and the December solstice, they're all, you know, you can't have one without the other three, they're all interrelated. So as you're expressing yourself right now to experience greater levels of joy, you are feeling in such a way, it's kind of pulling you back into um, shared feeling and the shared values of feeling with those close to you. You know, that could be manifesting an idea growing between you and your partners where you might even create together. Um, but the feelings are erupting. Um, uh, another part of the eighth house is very much about sex, um, also about death and taxes, crikey, that doesn't sound so fun, but the life changes, you know, we're going through these cycles of life, these rites of passage. And so, you know, you're feeling into this space, like from this sense of joy that you're creating, you might even feel comfortable to delve into the secrets of your life that you might not have the strength to face ordinarily. Um, from there, you're feeling actually so much more delighted to interact and relate with other people that are being creative. And it might be that you're wanting to create other um, opportunities with other people, other creators. It's almost like because you're being creative and, and being in your joy, you can now relate to other people and their joy and support them in their joy. And then as it comes back around to what you're wanting to produce in your world, um, this is creating the opportunity to create actual value for yourself, actual money, actual cash, actual resources, and also a greater sense of the value you give to the world. So this is very much the more you create, the more value shared and um, independent you're creating for yourself. Now, if we look at this on a month by month basis, so this starts on the 20th of March, the 20th of March to the 19th of April, we're in our eclipse season and I didn't put in the penumbral lunar eclipse on the 25th of March, not because it's not important, but because I'm actually doing an eclipse special video that's going to be released in a few days time. So you'll get more. I didn't want to repeat myself too much, but the total solar eclipse, I have put this in because it's so monumental. I can't not ignore it. You know, I, I have to put it in. So during this Aries season, taking us up until the 19th of April, on the 8th of April, we have got this total solar eclipse that's in a conjunction with Chiron. Now, this is important because when I was here before saying, you know, we've had Chiron and the North Node come together and boy, has it created some sort of healing discomfort. You know, we've realized that where we um, have been like, are we happy in our creations? Do we feel supported in our creations? Are we creating enough? Where's the pain point of our creations? And to be fair, having it here in the fifth is not so painful as maybe having it in the sixth or um, having it in the first or in the twelfth even. But anyway, the total solar eclipse is reminding us or us of that point. And it's giving us the energy to maybe even blast that pattern away fully. Though I do also notice that on the 29th of May, there's a Mars conjunction with Chiron. So yes, it's in May during the Gemini time, but it's still impacting us here. So 
you know, whatever pain we have about our creations, it's really important to um, release it as much as we can. Um, and it could be co-creation, you know, like what are we afraid of letting go of? Um, what are we afraid is going to happen if we actually really create fully and spontaneously and perfectly? Wow. <laughs> like, don't be afraid of it. Um, anyway, from the 19th of April, we're going into our Taurus time. Um, and that's the time when you're getting everything fit for purpose, everything tidied up, neatened up. And it, it will get kind of more exciting because we've also got a couple of days later, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction on the 21st. Now, this is a long-awaited conjunction that's going to open up our opportunities to live a magnificent life. And it's probably going to make things very, very busy at home. Now, the sixth house does also cover health, physical health. Um, as well as your money, your your house, the running of your house, the running of your work. It's kind of everything that you do on a daily basis. So, you know, at some level, Jupiter and Uranus could show you a new set of insights that kind of blows your reality apart and gives you a whole new way of seeing things. Um, however, Jupiter and Uranus in terms of your health, um, you know, Jupiter can also represent inflammation um, and where things grow too fast. And Uranus can show sudden changes. Um, and, it, and, and both of them can pick up on accidents. So I would, you know, I'm not saying, you know, wow, this is going to happen, but be careful of your body, you know, have real positive intentions for your body and for your learning about your body and how your body can change and adapt and feel magnificent. Absolutely hold those intentions and also be cautious. Don't do anything too risky with your body because where are you without your body is my big question. <laughs> but anyway, you know, all in all, this, this is actually sharpening up and making your real day-to-day -day life quite exciting. Now, the last part of this season starts from the 20th of May and takes you to the 20th of June. And in that time, we've got, you know, the sun going into Gemini. We've got some beautiful aspects between Jupiter and the other planets, really talking about expansion. And it's it's absolutely highlighting your relationships and your ability to have great relationships. Jupiter going into this area fully is showing that your relationships are actually quite, quite lighthearted, quite magnificent. If you're single, you might find lots of partners, <laughs> you know, you might be quite popular, um, you know, because Jupiter increases numbers or grows things, you know, so it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, I also really love this um, trine on the 3rd of June from Jupiter to Pluto, both in air signs, all very idealistic. So you may well find that you've got some real pleasing and beautiful times from your local community um, and also your relationships. You know, are you going to meet somebody from your local community? Are you going to meet somebody that shares similar values to you from your community? Who knows? But it's lighthearted. So, you know, the absolute silver lining of this um, season ahead is that you're coming into a time where your relationships are transformed and they're actually quite magical um, and, and really, really beautiful. So isn't it funny at the start of the season, you're coming into this, how can I create more joy for myself? And as you're ending this season, it's like, wow, yes, I am coming into a feeling of joy with other people. So I love that Sagittarius. Now, before I leave this forecast, I want to do a little shameless plug because you know, if you like a bit of fun and who doesn't, right? Um, <laughs> I'm doing um, a live show on the 20th of March. That is the day of our astrological new year of the Aries point of, you know, uh, the sun being at zero, zero, zero degrees of Aries. Um, and so I'm meeting up to do a 12 signs of the Zodiac quiz. Um, it's going to be fun. I've got four other astrologers with me. You might have met these ones before, Alexandra, Jasmina, and Kimberly on my show. I'm also joined by Jim, who I've not met before, but it's going to be fun. Uh, my lovely husband, Carl, is going to be hosting. He's an excellent host and facilitator. So um, yeah, if you want to find out more, have a bit of a laugh. It's going to be low-key, probably a bit snarky at times. <laughs> we, you know, we're going to look at the good, the bad, and the ugly of um, Zodiac signs. And also, you know, be prepared for some outbreaks of compassion and empathy too. Um, I, I think it's going to be great fun. So if that sounds 
like something you'd like to see, then please do keep that date free. It's the 20th of March and you'll see it advertised on my channel. But anyway, have a fantastic season ahead. Lots and lots of love to you. Bye for now. Mm. Okay. So we're on to Capricorn Ascendant. Now, oh, Capricorn, you're one of these signs that actually starts the, um, the December solstice. So you know, the start of your sign is one of these sensitive points, one of these zero point energy spaces. And so I don't know if you've seen the first part of the show, I was talking a lot more about the actual astrology of the actual chart of the moment the sun goes into its um, March equinox position. But I was also talking about the importance of the zero point energy and what difference that makes in our lives and how it's used to really activate things in our chart. So the first part of this forecast for you, Capricorn, is looking at these activation points and what they're representing. And then the second point is looking at the season ahead on a month by month level and talking about what counts and what is making a difference. So the first thing that I want to really share with you is that the Aries point energy comes around at this point every year around the 20th, 21st of March, and it's activating and manifesting a new reality for yourself. And the where it's based in your chart, it's it's um, about you creating a new reality for your home, a new reality for your security, a new reality for um, safety. Um, it's stable. Your family's included in this. Um, it also represents the past a little bit. So you might find that this time of year every year you are reminded of your childhood and what was good about it, maybe what was bad about it and, and what you make that mean in terms of how you want to live. So, you know, it's manifesting your reality as a stronger reality at home. You know, there's this organizing force coming in to transform your home and the way you live. And because of this, your feelings are actually taking you more outwards um, towards your partners. So it's almost like the more stable you are at home, the more available energy you've got to share with partners in your life, which I love that, you know, your feelings are absolutely um, concerned about the people that are living with you. So you're, you're making this reality great for these people. And then because of what you've been able to create for you and your partners, you're now relating to people in your outer world, in your career, in a new way. You know, there's fresh insights. You know, it's quite possible that you're a more magnificent mentor because of this. But your urge to relate is birthing in your um, the part of your career in quite a, a great way. And then because you've got your... Um, you've got your home, your relationships, your work really activated. It's also um, pulling on the Capricorn point, which is producing more of who you are in your world. Now, <laughs> I'm not talking about you cloning yourself necessarily, unless, you know, that is your big thing. And let's face it, you're pretty enter enterprising. But I think it's about you finding more of who you are, you know, because you found your security um, and have got um, a greater flow of feelings with the people you're relating to and working with, it feels like you're safe to really explore who you are. So, you know, these um, equinoxes and solstices really bring you into yourself in a really nice way. Now, for the following three month month period of this um, this season, um, I'm going to call these astrological months. Of course, you know, they're not calendar months. And, you know, earlier in my forecast, I got into some real pickles. <laughs> I've got to do four edits later <laughs> when I go back over this video because, boy, I've made some howlers of mistakes <laughs> referring to the the months as, um, uh, referring to the signs as months and whatnot. I've just got, uh, it's gone a bit wonky, but I think I've got it under control now, Capricorn. So, um what I'm going to do is, is kind of detail what's going on in these times. Now, the first astrological month from the 20th of March to the 19th of April, it's really our eclipse season. Um, now, I haven't actually put the penumbral lunar eclipse in on the 25th of March, um, mainly because I'm about to release um, an eclipse video <laughs> that's going to talk more about the uh, penumbral and the solar eclipse, you know, in greater detail. But I couldn't not put this one on because 
the total solar eclipse is um, super strong. It's in an, ex an exact conjunction with Chiron. Now, um, you know, uh, like Chiron has been in this part of your chart since 2017, 2018. Um, and we've also got the North Node going through this. And they came into a conjunction. Um, they started easing into it late late January. They've been really intensely in it towards the end of February and the beginning of March in particular. And now they're separating. But that particular energy in this part of your chart has brought up sort of insecurities and questions in terms of um, – you know, how secure are you at home and, and possibly bringing up stuff from your childhood. Now, this point is getting kind of prodded a little bit. It's, it's, you're being reminded of it by subsequent, um, planetary lineups. And so this is what I want to, um, really impress upon you is the total solar eclipse is nudging this point in quite a big way. It's a, new moon so it could create a new regime at home a new feeling of greatness at home it's also an eclipse so it's a new moon and an eclipse together um so it's very potent um and it's in a conjunction with chiron so it's very potent to change these insecurities it's very potent to work on these insecurities it's pretty special actually um special sorry um yeah so it, it could really clear old wounds from the past if you let it or if you're not really ready for it, it could trigger uh, a re-emergence of these wounds. So what I would say is wherever you are on the wounding spectrum, um, ignore it at your peril. Just be aware that around the 8th, you're likely to get your knickers in a twist about something because somebody says something that is triggering an old ancient wound. And you might not know where it's come from. And if that happens, what I say is quickly get out of that situation, sit down, <laughs> take it, have a cup of tea or glass of water, sit down, relax and think, okay, what am I feeling? Oh, sorry. Uh, I realized I got a bit agitated there talking about it. What am I feeling? Where am I feeling it? And you might notice that there's a sensation in your body um, or a stirring in your body. You might, sorry, this is the NLP side of me coming in. You might notice that there's a color or a sensation or a, even a texture that you can notice in your body at this spot of where you're feeling the knot or the, the dis-ease about what you're being triggered about. And what I would absolutely advise you do is, is really tune in and start talking to that part of your body and say, where is this triggering coming from? It's okay. <laughs> like it is okay. You know, whatever is coming up is coming up for a reason. It's coming up because there's a sore spot that hasn't been healed. And what you're triggered about is just the surface level, but it's not the underlying fear. And if you can sit quietly and talk with yourself and get to the bottom of it, I know it's kind of difficult for you from your Capricorn ascendant perspective. It's not sort of comfortable stuff like self-talk necessarily. It's all that sort of hippie crap. But, you know, if you can spend some time to get to the bottom of it, it's less likely to create a flipping nuclear bomb in your home, <laughs> which is absolutely what this is kind of implying. You know, this is... Um, an eclipse of magnitude that could really create big change at home if you allow it to really change things. Um, now, uh, seeing as we're already here, I also want to say that later on in this season, in the Gemini time, Mars is in the conjunction with Chiron on the 29th and it's reactivating this. You know, it's almost like close but no cigar. No, <laughs> you need to go over this again. So do it to the best of your ability, really understand what it is that gets you really, really mad with rage. Cause actually what's underneath it is a hurt, a fear, um, a vulnerability that you're too embarrassed to look at or feel too ashamed to look at. And yeah, if you can lovingly look at that, um, you and your body, your body will give you all the clues you need to find the, the detail of, of how it's happened. Um, and, and you'll, you'll be able to move beyond that. Um, or, or get a good coach that will help you through it. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> the first month, um, is, is, is pretty raw and pretty ferocious in terms of home. You've got so much energy. You could create so much change. Um, but you know, use that energy to make these changes. Don't let that energy use you. Now from the 19th of April to the 20th of May, we're in the Taurus time. And thankfully, um, it, it creates a bit of 
I think, a bit more creativity, a bit more space for yourself. You're feeling a lot more optimistic, a lot more creative. I think, you know, once you get your kind of base or your root chakra <laughs> or your home sorted, all of a sudden you're more in a sacral kind of place where it's like, whoa, get in, you know, I'm ready to do something amazing. Um, yeah, so we've got the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction on the 21st, which is fantastic for you Capricorns, you Capricorn ascendants. You know, it's really bringing in some excitement. It's really bringing in um, a sense of possibility um, and empowerment, I would say. And the fifth house is definitely a place of joy. You know, it's a place for you to experience lovely levels of joy. Now, as we're coming into the Gemini side of this season, from the 20th of May to the 20th of June, you'll see Jupiter makes this kind of rapid advance from here to there. <laughs> And he comes into Gemini on the 25th of May. Um, and yeah, from the 20th of May to the 25th of May and then to the 3rd of June, there's some beautiful aspects to Jupiter, in fact, and also to um, Pluto. So it's a, it's a very regenerative time for you. And this part of your chart is very much about how you manage your life and your health um, how is your life working for you? Is it fit for purpose? Is it working for you or are you working for it? You know, if you're finding you're, you're spending all your time cleaning your house, maybe your house is too big or maybe you need to thin some of the things out of your house. Like in those examples, your house is owning you and you're not really, you know, wouldn't it be great to get the balance so good that it feels like your life is the life and and, you know, you can spend time in your house and enjoy spending time in your house. But if it is too much of a burden, then there's something out of balance. Um, so, you know, you're looking at your health, your how you manage your money, how you manage your day-to-day -day working environment. Um, it's very much about the nuts and bolts of your life. Um, and so, yeah, with Jupiter coming here, you won't be able to hide from the things that are out of balance, you know, they will become very obvious, but it could give you a lot of optimism and some increased wealth, um, to, to enjoy in that area. Um, especially from this Jupiter trine to, um, Pluto in your second house, it's like bringing the wealth into your day-to-day -day reality and vice versa. So, you know, from your work and, and from the fact that you've got a great home that's running well and your job's running well, it brings you more wealth. So, you know, as we start this season, you know, you are really trying to renovate your life at the, at the root level. And then by the time you're going into your next season, it's all cleared up and it feels really quite optimistic. So Capricorn, I hope that's helpful for you. And um, before you go, cause I know you, you've got quite a wry sense of humor. Um, and please forgive this shameful plug. Um, but on the 20th of March, which is the day of the astrological new year, I'm hosting a live, um, quiz, a <laughs> live Zodiac quiz. Um, and it's, it's kind of part piss take part, um, lighthearted, jovial fun about the Zodiac signs. I'm joined by four excellent astrologers, Alexandra and Jasmina and Kimberly. You've seen on my channel before, most likely Jim's new to my channel, but I'm sure he's going to be great fun. He's a double Gemini. My gorgeous husband is going to be hosting the quiz. He's a very experienced MC. So I think it's going to be great fun. It, it will be irreverent. It won't be very serious, but there will be some outbreaks of compassion, I'm sure, for the zodiac signs when we talk about the things that maybe we didn't realize about zodiac signs. So who knows what to expect, but I'm hoping it's going to be a lighthearted and fun way to start the new season. So if that sounds like something you might want to join in on, please do join us in the chat room or watch on playback. But anyway, have a fantastic season in the month ahead, uh, in the three months ahead, Capricorn. I hope this has been helpful and hope to connect with you real soon. Lots of love. Bye for now. Okay. So on to Aquarius now. Um, this is a forecast of two parts, Aquarius. So the first part, I'm talking about the activation points of the zero degrees of cardinal signs, um, because, you know, the astrological new year, uh, happy astrological new year, by the way, <laughs> starts when the sun goes into the sign of Aries, when it crosses over the zero degrees, zero, zero sign of Aries. That's as the sun goes in. We're in Aries now, and this is the start of the official new season. And the seasons are organized according, you know, from the eclipses 
So we've, uh, sorry, the equinoxes and the solstices. So we've got the equinox, we've got the June solstice, we've got the September equinox, and we've got the December solstice. Um, and so the first part of this is to understand what this Aries point or this uh, March equinox point is manifesting in our reality. Now, because this point is tweaked or um, activated as the sun goes over it, it has a reverberation around the other points because the sun will be square to the Cancer point, square to the Capricorn point, and in opposition to the Libra point. So what does this mean to you? Um, and then in the second part of this, I'm going to be looking at the the new season on an astrological month by month basis, not calendar month, I must say. Um, and I hold my hand up um, in a bit of embarrassment, actually. The first four or five forecasts I did today, I've had to do lots of edits on because I got really confused as to whether I was in the actual sign or in the calendar month. Uh, it's a little bit confusing. But it's, it's quite a lot of information I'm trying to fit into a small, small space of time um, to give you some context, but hopefully this will go without a hitch. Um, so anyway, the, the Aquarius ascendant activation point of Aries, um, as the sun goes over this point every year around the 20th to the 21st of March, um, it's activating this third house for you. Um, what does that mean? Well, the first thing I would say is it's bringing you into more of, um, a feeling of community and belonging, you know, like who do you belong to? Not necessarily your home, but like the surrounding area of your home, like who are your community? So it's bringing you into the community. It's bringing you into meetings and business, which are very much sort of a Gemini kind of thing. Obviously the sign Gemini has some sort of resonance with the third house. Um, and so it's, it's a quite a social place. So there's an activation of everything that's social, everything that is belonging within your community, the activation of nights out, meetings, meet and greets, um, how you connect, how you join and how you learn from each other. And the learning that takes place in this part of your chart, um, is, kind of black and white it's it's chit chatty it's not necessarily in-depth learning but it's a shared narrative that 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 you have it's storytelling um so yeah it's it's quite a nice activation point so as we go into spring in the northern hemisphere and autumn in the southern hemisphere if you've got aquarius ascendant it's really bringing you into a more social space now, because you're feeling a lot more social and that sense of belonging and probably putting yourself at, at use to your community, you know, you've probably been quite helpful within your community. It's also creating this feeling that is kind of urging you out towards getting your day to day life more organized, you know, because this is quite a busy place, this third house. You know, it's it's busy, it's interactive, and you can't really fully appreciate the busyness and the interactivity if you're not really living a good, clean and easily organized life. So you are also feeling the energy of getting into this um, sort of like this is your house, but this is like your house really working for you. You know, you've got your work, your house, your health, your routines. You may well find that because you're in your community more that all of a sudden some of your routines are influenced by your community so you might take up power walking or dog walking with other dog walkers at the same time you know and and so on and so forth and then from these changes you're getting an expansion and so the way you're relating to people is that you're meeting other people who are from other walks of life, from maybe different belief systems, different political systems. I say that um, with a sense of irony because right now, as I as I record this, <laughs> actually what I'm noticing more and more on social media is less cohesion and more polarity. But hey, I say that as an intention <laughs> that I hope we are able to birth in the world that we can actually sit in the same room with people of different political values, different religion, religious values, spiritual values, and still find the common link between us, which is we're all humans. 
and we all care and we all bleed if you cut us and we can probably make it work if we actually take the time to get to know each other and to expand and to allow that expansion to take place. Once we find out what's behind people's viewpoints, often we can understand where they're coming from, you know? Um, so it's, it's about that sort of global conversation. So just by you being more in your community and some, some of your habits are kind of influenced by that, it's taking you into a bigger world and a bigger conversation. And because of that, you're really learning so much more about your world. And in fact, it's kind of updating your operating system. It's allowing greater intuition to come in because, you know, when we hold ourselves in quite a rigid position in terms of our belief systems and our values, and we say that's right, that's wrong, and you're in that space of rational right, rational wrong, it cuts off our channel to our natural intuition, cuts it clean away. So the more you are um, expressing yourself in the community, enjoying that and enjoying the expansion the more your natural intuition is coming into play. Isn't that wonderful? And that's a real gift. So this is happening every time this, this comes around, around the 20th of March. So yes, that's the context that you're going into this new season with. Now, <laughs> if I add in the um, other parts of this, so, you know, from the 20th of March to the 19th of April, um, I'm going to call this our eclipse season. So I didn't put in the penumbral lunar eclipse, um, which takes place on the 25th of March. Um, but I did put the total solar eclipse in. Now, the thing is, I'm, I've actually got a separate eclipse video that you can watch if you choose to, and that's going to be launched in a couple of days' time. So stay stay tuned for that one. Uh, that will be in time for you and for the first eclipse um, and then some. But this eclipse season is creating quite a lot of dynamics and change for you in your third house. It is creating so much of a new context in terms of your place within the world and your place within the community in terms of what information you're sharing with people um, and how you're doing it. It's, it's actually quite a learning experience, but it's really turning things um, on its head from your perspective. Um, as uh, I should say, um, the total solar eclipse is exactly in a conjunction with Chiron. Now, earlier this year, um, towards the end of January, you started to feel the oncoming North Node Chiron conjunction. I did a video about it. It was really exact between the 19th of February and the 5th of March. Um, and it's now separating, but the energy of the healing um, for our karmic growth, for our life plan, for that sense of destiny is still being triggered. You know, so this Chiron point that the North Node just went over now has a flipping total solar eclipse going over it. And later on in May, and May the 29th to be exact, Mars is in a conjunction with it. So whatever pain you have about being in a community, whatever being in your community triggers in you in an uncomfortable way is likely to come up for you around the time of the 8th and also around the time of the 29th of May. So watch out for that. Uh, you know, if this, if you can recognize it and know what you might need to um, do to avoid that impacting you, then that would be really, really helpful. But suffice to say, it's, it's a big energy. Anyway, let's move on. So from the 19th of April to the 20th of May, this is um, a kind of relaxing moment. <laughs> so we've got the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, which is long awaited. Um, and we've got that sense of like Uranus is one of your ruling planets, by the way. So that's all good. But it coming together with Jupiter is, is really, really cool in your fourth house. This could create a lot of change for somebody who is wanting to move home. So if you have been wanting to move home, this could give you the impetus to find the right place, to make the decision. Or you might need to make different decisions about the way you live in your home or something like that. But it's still a very like massive energy <laughs> in terms of what's going on at home. It feels like everything is up in the air and changing, but it's an optimism and, and a sense of, um, you know, it, it had to happen. Does that make sense? Almost like things can only continue so long before, you know, you grow too big for your home or you grow too big in context for your community, you know, so there is this sense of expansion needed. And if your house can't fully accommodate you, then it's time to change. Um, it's creating quite a lot of excitement 
Um, so you might find actually that there's a surprise new member of the family or, you know, there's a new person that needs to come into your home that is slightly disruptive, but it's, it's creating a new sense of a new way of living. Um, that's probably the best way of, of describing it. Um, and it could really create some great dreams and great experiences. So I, li I like that. Then um, as we head into our next season or the next part of the season, which is from the 20th of May to 20th of June, we're really coming into this um, Gemini time, which you are really in alignment with. You know, you're really quite cool with it. It's a fellow air sign. Um, so, you know, from the 21st of April until the 20th of May, Jupiter, sorry, 25th of May, Jupiter makes a massive dash into the sign of Gemini really, really quite quick. You know, from the 20th of May, we've got lots of planets interacting with Jupiter in really lovely aspects. And then as Jupiter goes into the sign of Gemini, he's awakening your inner sense of joy. He's there to create fun, to create opportunity, to create romance. If, if you're needing romance to create a greater sense of sensuality in your life, um, to create a lot more fun for your hobbies, the things that you're absolutely passionate about. You could actually make them bigger, create something from them. It's, it's fantastic. Now, this is also going to trine Pluto on the 3rd of June, which is massive and beautiful connection. Um, and it's quite a long lasting one. You know, it, it, it feels, you'll feel the resonance of that, you know, the things that I'm trying to create right now are really changing the personality of me. And the more I change it and transform in my personality, the more the things I want to create change. So it, it's really interesting to me that at the start of the um, season, you know, your thoughts are very much about um, your community and what you're learning from your community and how cool it could be in your community and how you're transformed from your community. And you're actually being brought into this sense of creativity. So like you're starting with the creativity of the community and learning to be creative about yourself. So that's what I really think about this, um, you know, March to June time, um, 2024 for you, Aquarius Ascendant. Now, I hope that was useful. But before you go, I just want to do a shameless plug to something that you might find a bit funny. So who knows? Um, on the 20th of March, I'm doing a live show. Um, it's a quiz show. It's an interactive astrology quiz show. It's, it's not really about astrology. It's about the zodiac in particular. So the signs, given that we've just changed signs, the signs are the hot, hot tip of the day. I'm joined by four top astrologers, Alexandra, Jasmina, and Kimberly have been on my show before. Jim is new to my channel, but um, I think we're going to have fun with him. He's a double Gemini. Actually, so is Jasmina. And actually, Alexandra has got Gemini moon too. Uh, my husband, Carl, is going to be hosting. He is... Um, He's a great host and MC. So I think it's going to be a great fun. It's going to be irreverent. Um, please don't take it too seriously. <laughs> seriously. Um, there will probably be a breakout of um, compassion and understanding and deep insight when we do have these moments which are inevitable where we realize there are some signs that we've mis misinterpreted or been a bit cruel to. Um, you know, because we all do it. We all, we're, we're all stuck in judgments at some level, aren't we? So anyway, if that sounds like something you might be interested in on the 20th of March, please do join us in the chat room and show your support um, and maybe have some fun with us. But anyway, um, I hope this has been useful. Have a fantastic season in the season ahead and hope to connect with you again real soon. Lots of love. Bye for now. So Pisces Ascendant, how are you doing? Happy new astrological year to you, my dear. Now, um, I'm doing this forecast in two parts. So the first part of it is analyzing where the Aries point or the, um, you know, the start of the zodiac starts, the start of the ecliptic. Um, it's at zero degrees in the sign of Aries. Um, now you might notice that this Aries point, um, as it's known, or AP, as I've put in brackets there, um, it represents the March equinox. We've also got the autumn equinox. This is the point that the autumn equinox um, or the September equinox um, corresponds with. We've also got the June solstice. 
um, starting um, the Northern Hemisphere summer and the Southern Hemisphere winter. God, it's so complicated. And um, we've also got this point here, um, which represents the December solstice. So these are our equinox and solstice points, and they are points in our chart that activate things. And when a planet goes over these points, there is um, a sort of activation going on. So the first part of this chart is uh, this forecast is to tell you what's going on with these activation points. And then the second part, I'm going to just talk you through month on month, you know, just some of the highlights, you know, as to what you might expect, you know, for a full understanding of the actual season um, at the start of the March um, equinox, you might also choose to listen into the previous part of this video where I really detail it and look at the astrology. But this is, you know, for the um, zodiac star signs, <laughs> you know, the um, the sort of rising signs, you know, the sign by sign forecast. So, um, you know, take what you need, I guess, is what what I really want to say. So um, this is activated by the sun around the 20th and 21st of March every single year. Um, and when it comes around, it is really bringing to mind um, your financials. Um, and because of what you're earning, your value, like how do you value yourself? Do you feel like you're valuable enough? Do you feel like you give enough? Do you feel like people give you enough? Um, it's also very much about receivership. And I know I've spoken to you many times before, Pisces Ascendant, about being open to greater receiving. Um, now, this is this is a very, um, you know, interesting position to start the astrological new year on. Now, of course, these, these points can't exist without each other because we have this point you know when the sun goes over it the sun is automatically in a square to this one and this one and in an opposition to this one so each of these points is kind of vibrating with a different energy so to speak so let me talk, talk you through it so um when the sun goes over this point you are pulled into manifesting a new physical resource and value reality for yourself. And there's new ways of thinking about it. You might be thinking in terms of new businesses, new business ideas. You might be thinking, oh God, uh, nobody likes me. I don't have any intrinsic value. All those things to do with values and earnings are absolutely compounded. Um, and hopefully as this time comes around for you, you're kind of excited by it rather than put off by it. But as you're considering these, um, it brings your feelings out into a place of, hmm, wonder what I could create. Yes, I need more money. Oh, I'm feeling like I want to create something. I want to create a cottage industry or um, I'm feeling a bit poor. And you're like, wow, I need to create another job for myself. I'm going to I'm gonna get a part-time job. You know, it's, it's creating a, a sense of, um, I don't know, how can my joy bring me more money? Um, but it's, it's having a knock-on effect. Um, at the same time, it's also creating this urge to relate to the people in your life who may well have a value for you. It might be a value you like. It might not be a value like they might have lots of expectations on you that you don't meet. And so maybe these people you're relating to at this time, actually, you should just like ignore and let them kind of <laughs> let them walk on by. But, you know, hopefully you might be getting some good insight and um, advice from the people around you. Now, the eighth house also incorporates um, other people's money. And also it means banks, loans, um, mortgages and things like that. It's also tax. So you might also be considering what you've got to pay up. Um, and also where people within your family matrix, um, the, the, you know, the people you've partnered with at some level in this lifetime, how they might be able to help you also, um, it captures inheritances as well. So, you know, you, you're thinking about values and how you can man manifest more physical reality for yourself. You're getting creative, you're engaging with the others in your life and their money and, and how you might access that and how you might share that. And from that is coming a bit of a created reality, a shared reality for all of you, where maybe you come up with a joint plan of action. So these things are sort of activating every time you come around to this point in um, the, the yearly calendar. Now, what does that mean to you in terms of the um, from March to June? 
So what I'm going to do is break it down on a month by month basis. And by month by month, I've got myself into a pickle many times um, on the, these forecasts today. And hopefully I'm not going to do it in this one, but um, I'm going to use the astrological months. So they're not calendar months, but I'm going to call this the Aries astrological month, the Taurus astrological month, the Gemini astrological month. Um, now, this starts on the 20th of March and takes you to the 19th of April. And during that time, um, we are really in um, the sort of dynamics of the activation points that I mentioned just a moment before. Now, there's also two eclipses. Now, I've named one of them. I didn't put the other one in because actually I'm going to be releasing an eclipse video in a few days. <laughs> so stay open to that one if you want a deeper dive into the eclipses and how they're going to work for you. But it's it's impossible to ignore the total solar eclipse, which is the new moon on the 8th of April. Um, it's in a conjunction with Chiron um, and it is picking up on the old themes of the Chiron North Node conjunction that um, <clears throat> has been coming in since the end of January, really came into its activation from the 19th of Feb to the 5th of March. Um, and it's now separating, but the feelings of um, healing, the, he the feelings of vulnerability that have come up for people are very real and, and still playing out for a lot of people. And this total solar eclipse on the 8th is likely to inflame it. Anything that's left undiscovered and unworked on is likely to come up. Um, but hey, um, it, it's a great clearing point. So this Aries month for you is going to be clearing space, really clearing space for you to recognize the value in who you are and to really start to believe it um, and you'll get tested on it. Um, I do also want to say that there is a conjunction on this point, on the Chiron point, on May the 29th, that's here. Um, but it's, it's, you know, so whatever you don't deal with is coming back at the end of May as well. So <laughs> watch out for that. Now, as we move into the um, Taurus month, um, from the 19th of April to the 20th of May. During this time, we've actually got the Uranus-Jupiter conjunction on the 21st. And I see that as being um, really helpful. It's a helpful bit of respite. It's creating a sense of joy and expectation and fun and excitement in the third house. It's really exciting, in fact. It's absolutely there to create new and crazy and brilliant connections um, and insights that are coming from the strength of your connections. The more you connect, the more you learn. It's not necessarily plain sailing because Jupiter is expansive and Uranus is shocking and changing. So it could really create a whole new bunch of friends and um, confidants for you. Um, but it's, it's, it's just so... I don't know. You can't really keep out of it because it's your local environment. You know, things are changing things. I mean, you may find you're in a progressive, a progressively, um, um, messaged or narrated community, you know, uh, your community is, is very, um, you know, into considering, um, all matters, larger than your own community you know it's kind of bringing the outside in who knows but yeah there's some big changes but it could be really really fun i would suggest you concentrate on the fun aspects of it the weird aspects of it and the things that are creating great change and kind of ignore the things that feel a bit preachy and a little bit too intense because um you know jupiter can get a little bit um belligerent and a little bit arrogant and uranus can you know, cut off from people. So avoid the the fun and like enhance the fun and excitable energy and ignore the belligerent and arrogant energy that this might bring up in your local communities. Now, from the 20th of May to the 20th of June, um, Jupiter gets a wriggle on from here and moves right up to here. He comes in on the 25th, but we are from the 20th of May, we are in our Gemini season. Um, and that is really bringing, um, enhancement space um and a feeling of optimism actually into your home from the 20th of may jupiter is making some great um connections with other planets um yeah and by the time he comes into the sign of gemini he is creating um a feeling of peace and optimism and expansion at home now you know jupiter going over this point in your chart could very well um, bring up the need to move that that's entirely possible. 
Um, I've seen many moves take place when Jupiter goes over this point, but it's also showing that this is just this feeling of well-being, and you know you can really get into a nice routine. You can feel really grateful and and um, at peace with the people you live with. Um, it's a good thing. It can be too much of a good thing. You know, Jupiter in this place, you could feel so good that you end up just staying at home and, you know, getting bigger and bigger on your really comfy couch. But, <laughs> you know, Jupiter is there to actually give you some well-being um, and to make your family and your home run really nicely. And it's, it's kind of fun and joyous. It's bringing a lot more um, love into your home. Now, when Jupiter is um, making a trine to Pluto um, on the third, this is really great energy because it's enhancing your intuition and the sense of what you might change in your internal world and it's stabilizing your home. So it's almost saying the more intuitive you are, the more um, able you are to see the darkness in your own programming and still love it and still work with it and maybe give it some compassion and love. The more you can do that, the more you work on your inner self, the easier and the better your life gets at home. So I really see that this whole transformation that you're on in this season ahead, Pisces Ascendant, is taking you from maybe not valuing yourself enough to actually learning that um, you are exactly where you need to be, that home is where the heart is. And actually your real home is probably in this 12th house, in this, in this soul based, um, part of your life. And, and that the more you tune into your heart, the more you tune into what your body is whispering to you and what your soul is whispering to you, the more peace you can have at home. So there you go. That is one hell of a transformation for you. So I hope that's helpful, Pisces Ascendant. Please don't go just yet because I just want to do a shameless plug for. Um, a really fun night. So, um, and it, this might be up your street, it might not, but you know, it's worth a go. So on the 20th of March, on the day of the, um, uh, the sun going into the sign of Aries, that's our March equinox. Um, we are hosting, um, a Zodiac quiz. <laughs> so there's me and four other astrologers. You've probably seen Alexandra, Jasmina, Jim and Kimberly before, uh, sorry, all the ladies before, but Jim is new to our channel. Um, but I, you know, I am assured he's going to be great fun. He's a double Gemini as is Jasmina and Alexandra's got Gemini moon. So the Geminis really have it, I have to say. But um, my husband, Carl, is going to be the um, the quiz master and the host. He's an excellent MC. It's what he does for a living. So I think this is going to be great fun. It's going to be irreverent, playful. We might take the mickey a little bit um, and explore some of the stereotypes of Zodiac signs. But there will be these moments where we break out into compassion and empathy and insights and share some of what we wish we'd always known about the zodiac signs so if that sounds like fun to you <laughs> then please do um you know like create a spot in your diary it's on the 20th of march at 9 p.m uk time um it's already advertised on my channel or you know watch and catch up but if you do join us live please do say hello in the chat room because that's what will keep the game really fresh and interesting but anyway have a fantastic um new season ahead pisces ascendant i really appreciate you checking in with me today and i hope to work with you again real soon bye for now my love Mwah. And so I just want to thank everybody who's listened this far and also to my show sponsors who currently are these wonderful people. I really couldn't do it without you. And I love and appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, so, so very much. <laughs> so anyway, if you have stuck around this long, um, thank you so much. <laughs> said that a few too many times there. Um, like I said, the astrology for the um, new season is really, really interesting. And that's at the first part. And then the in independent, um, sign by sign forecasts are all there for you. Um, I hope you've learned something about yourself along the way, you know, looking at the Aries point and the other points is, is quite useful. Actually, if you can see where they get triggered each, each time in your chart, you get so much 
more of an idea as to what the natural ebb and flow of your life is about. But anyway, that's enough for me. I need to sit down now and put my feet up <laughs> and move out of this uncomfortable chair and see daylight because I'm stuck in a room with <laughs> with artificial, well, with real plants, but I can't put their proper pl plant lights on or else it messes up this lighting. So anyway, I need to get out so my plant's going to get some light. But anyway, that was a waffle. If I can be of any help to you at all in understanding your own um, life right now, what's going on, what the trends are, um, and you'd like me to have a look at a personalized reading, not just um, based on your ascendant, then please do just look below. You'll find all the links to the readings. You can just literally go and pop a slot in my diary. Just book yourself in and I will see you soon. But anyway, lots and lots of love to you and see you in the next season. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.